That ain't working. Hey folks, welcome back to Funny for Nothing Podcast. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we got a great episode today, episode three of the podcast with the great Todd Glass. The one and only Todd here, uh, Glass. Of course, with my co-host as always, my pal, Kevin Tinkin. How you feeling? I'm sweating. Yeah, it is a little bit hot. It's a little bit, uh, little bit, little bit sweaty and sexy here. I like, to, I like to be sweaty when I do the intros. I think it's important that people know I'm a real human being. Yeah, it means that you've already done a bunch of hard work. And whoever's been talking trash about my haircut, you better <laughs> back it off. Back it off. Happy to have you guys here. Uh, as always, please rate, review, subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast. Send us emails. Yeah, emails to funnyfornothingpod at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Anything you got to say, send it over there. We're going to be reading some on the old program here. Yeah. And uh, follow us on Instagram at funny for nothing. No pod, just funny for nothing. Funny for nothing on the Instagram. Yeah, if you, if you guys have guests, uh, requests, you have questions that we should be asking, people will try to put out a little uh, a heads up on when things are going down and who our guests are going to be so you guys can throw some uh, questions out any questions for us things like that but those reviews are huge especially in these first five weeks give us some reviews go over to itunes or wherever you listen itunes is where we're we're trying to pop off uh i've been trying to pop off on itunes oh yeah Yeah. i've been trying to pop off on itunes for download us onto your ipod Mm -hmm. uh shuffle it up leave it running overnight share this with your family and friends uh you know especially if you have people in your life that uh are infirmed I hear we're we're actually we we get a pretty solid audience response from people who are infirm. Yeah, uh, if like you have it. a uh, you know your aunt and uncle who don't even know how to work their phone, grab it, leave a review, leave a mm-hmm. thing, subscribe mm-hmm. to it, and then they'll be mad when it's on their phone like the U2 album. What is this? Uh, but yeah, I'm happy you guys are here. Enjoy the episode. It's a great one today. Here he is. Our pal Todd Glass, everyone. That's the way you do it. I don't want you Man. to insult yourself. You're a good person, and Thank you're you. nice, and you're kind, and you're a good dad, yeah. and you're a good friend, and there's no reason for self-defecation. Thank so, you. Self-defecation? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've had a couple of accidents. Yeah. That's uh, bad before. Hey, I'm sitting next to Todd Glass, actor, comedian, writer, author, sex symbol, stubble icon. I'm so excited to have him on the pod. Todd, I want to start this off. Uh, your mom recently passed away. Do you think that's because you're gay or you're Jewish? Oh. No, Todd, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, Todd, please. <laughs> uh, both. We, uh, we, no, my mom died uh, because I'm uh, Jewish. Okay, okay. Is she, was she not? Jewish. Yeah, she is. Man. <laughs> I used to, I, real quick, I used to lie and say I was half Italian because... I didn't want people to stereotype me, and that happened a lot, you know. And uh, so I just said I'm half Italian. And then years later, a comedian said that I was a self-hating Jew, and I told him why. <laughs> he goes, "Well, you should stop that, you know." Not, not anyway. So later, like it would come up. So hey, what's your half? You know, your ethnicity or whatever they would ask. After I was told that, because I wanted to go, I don't, I don't. I don't it, first of all, I don't. I'm not. I don't adhere to the Jewish religion at all. But my point is, I'm not a self-hating Jew. So people, next time they ask me, it was my opportunity to go, can you, and they go, what, what, what's your background? I would go, oh, I'm half Jewish, still. Yeah. And they go, what's the other half? I go, Jewish. <laughs> 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 no, I'll admit it. Oh, I love it. Yeah, the, uh, you, you're a man who's been escaping stereotypes for your whole life. Try not to play into the stereotypes. I'm reading your book. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, by the way, can I ask you a I question? I read it to my kids. Wait, hold on. Are you reading that. it or are you, or are you listening I'm to it? I'm listening to it. Okay. If, hey, if you're, <laughs> can I tell you something? If you're skimming through it, that's beautiful. I'm mm-hmm. not, you know. Uh, but up front, don't you think you should, you know, give some of my, you know, so the, the and it, it makes me look bad. Believe me, this is not going to make me look good. But maybe give a few of my real credits. Oh, Todd oh. Glass, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. We're here with Todd Glass. He's been seen on... Uh, oh, they're su- going to be things I like. Such programs as Friends, Home Improvement. Oh, no. What? See, that's 10-year-old a- Tom on HBO. There you go. No, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm running through the Rolodex of oh, things. I'm impressed you even know that. Yeah, been, I was looking Tosh at your IMDb. Tosh. I'd go with, fr- uh, with uh, 10-year-old Tom. Because that's on the HBO right now, and uh, I like—I'll be honest—I like that as a credit. Uh, let's see, um, uh, and then uh, my my Netflix special, boom, 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 act happy, and I'm 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 good with that. What I, about no home improvement? No. <laughs> was that when? Was it a good? When you did that, were you excited at the time? I, I always hated auditioning, so yeah. when I got things, yeah. I got—I'm I, not even joking—I would get bummed. I would be like, oh. 
And sometimes I was afraid I was going to get it. Mostly I didn't. So I don't want to make it sound like, oh, I thought I wouldn't be. No, mostly I never got anything. I hated the audition process. And that was just, just a, everything was bad because I had a stomachache. It was like being back in high school when I had to do acting. Unless they let me be 100% ad lib. Yeah. On 10-year-old Tom, I have a ball. That's just voice acting. Yeah. But yeah, acting gave me a, st it really made me nervous. I'm not saying I don't think I could do a good job in the right situation, but on those where you had to get the line, oh, yeah. just, yeah. And Kevin uh, seemed to have, have some uh, pretty intense meltdowns doing self-tape auditions. <laughs> Kevin's, Kevin's been in the room for some real uh, laying face down oh, yeah. on the floor type of uh, no, meltdown. I'm waiting for Bruce to do something successful uh, so that I can I can uh, I can come back and be like now you owe me pal because yeah. there he, so so Bruce got an audition for SNL he had to you do did. it yeah. he, he, he taped cool. for SNL and Maybe Jesus. I should, you know, let him sit next to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'm trying to get on home improvement. <laughs> uh, I know I got. I was. Uh, I got an audition for LNS, uh, which was uh, the other <laughs> late night suckers. It was uh, mostly a, PT. When yeah, did you yeah. audition for SNL? Uh, June. So is it, it was live a self, or did you submit? No, it was a, so there's like it's like three parts of it where it's like there's the tape and then there's the. Uh, in person, like showcase, and then the audition. There, I just did the tape. You did, and the they tape. didn't like it. And how long was it? Five, five and a half minutes. I did three characters and two and a half minutes of stand up. Did they give any? Do they give any feedback no. or nothing? They the only way, you, the only way I found out I didn't get it is uh, my manager said that he was going to the showcase that night. Right, and I, and I know, wasn't on. It. For what this is yeah. worth, for what this is worth, and I think it is worth something. Just. You know, coming straight forward, not trying to sound like, oh, you never know, maybe. Sometimes you don't get things. Let's, I'll talk for myself, yeah. but you'll get it. Um, sometimes you don't just get it because they didn't like what you did, you know, yeah. and that's the case, and that's going to be, and they're not bringing you back, and they're not thinking about you. They didn't like it. Of course that happens, but I bet this happens more than you think. And was the good side of when I did a pilot called Todd's Coma, we had to cast it. And this happened more than once. Some people know we just didn't like them. But, but there were a few people, I, they probably didn't get a call and thought, oh, they didn't like me. And all we did was talk and try to find a place for this one girl. We're like, what could we use her? And she wasn't right for oh, that. that's amazing. I think that happens more than you think. But they don't have time to call everybody. So sometimes I think you'd be surprised a few years later, or, you know, or they did like you and it was on the fence. And next time well, you're... Well, yeah. And then maybe somebody that saw it is doing another project and they go, hey, that guy. We right. need that guy yeah. that did that thing. Yeah. I think the only way to keep sanity about the entire thing is that most things are uh, indifference right like i think that there was i imagine they saw it and they were like eh, maybe i don't know they that's weren't a like good... oh god this <laughs> is yeah get him out of here right well that's probably a good that's why i tried to have realistic i didn't want to make my story sound like yeah. you know like you need to be bullshitted but i do think it's better Your, yours is probably in the middle yeah they weren't like this is horrible they weren't doing a yeah i mean i also wasn't doing i didn't go up and do like an impression of joe by like i did a character called johnny porn seed which uh instead of johnny Appleseed, he's the guy who uh where it ran around the country and spread porn in different parts of the woods and different parts of this. And then it kind of turned out he's like being interrogated and he's like trying to say that he's just a litter bug and he's not providing children with pornography. So I understand that they probably saw that one like, we can't, what the hell is what this guy, what is this, this guy even doing? Yeah. But it was fun. I'm happy to be whatever, you know. That's but. why I'm glad a show like I think you should leave is on because it's going to open up more yes. than just being fucking you know shut the fuck up good it's going to change the landscape of what people can do in sketch in a big fucking way yeah no i got which, to do an episode of that it was awesome but you, you I, did an episode of i did you yeah but which i did one? uh the sitcom sketch it's in the third episode of the new season and and which which uh, the sitcom what, what's the premise of it uh where he's yelling into the microphone uh oh, during shut the, the sitcom audience up. i was on you the cast of the sitcom. See, but I'm I, I envious of, it, it, to me, getting to do anything on that show, big yeah. or small. I, it, they cut a lot of stuff and it ended up being very small, but it was still awesome. I was but still But you were stuck. fucking on it. Yeah. And it, I auditioned, yeah. five, Kevin helped me with a lot. I auditioned probably five or six things for that show. Didn't get anything I auditioned. Like, kind of what you're saying. Didn't get any of the things I auditioned for and then got that thing. And a lot of the things I did audition for ended up being either cut or off screen. So it would be like, if... We were doing a thing right now, and there's somebody outside yelling and be like, "Hey, pizza's here, you fucking piece of shit!" And then like, I'm like, that was basically what a lot of it ended up being. So I'm, it's all good. Well, you and know? you saw an actor have a freak out that day as I well. I did see. I saw multiple actors have freakouts. Really? That day because it was uh, there was a live audience. Like probably I don't know why I said that. So it was a live audience. There was like a it was a full studio audience, probably like a hundred people, and then everyone who was on the cast, it was 
two, me and another guy were both stand ups, and then the other people I think had done like theater or something. But these other two people had to go out and have uh, like talk directly to the crowd, pretty much like as their thing. And they were very uh, actory people, like kind of standoffish in the whatever other area. And then as soon as they got out in front of the people, they just froze up. And one of the guys would go out there, get halfway through, and he was a big guy, and he'd be like, "Line, fuck!" Yeah. And then we're like, like really, and every, so- and everybody was like, "It's a, everything. Everything's cool, man. Like you know, we're making a very silly thing here, like." Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, usually, here's the thing. Not that this matters, but I'm, I'll make it quick. I said, you're going to... Oh, yeah, you're, you're. I'm not digressing, you're, am I? You're good. Okay, cool. Um, uh, usually, it's from the head up. It, you know, so that's what makes me wonder. I mean, I've, the only thing I know about uh, Tim... Yeah, that he's like a super super sweet guy, but that's so he was in that because he's the yeah. one in the audience talking to the mic. So it's funny that people were getting who was was it a was it a was it a an up was it a tight cast was it like not tight but was there a was it no the vibe was great like, the vibe was great it was awesome so it was, it was just this this I think that, I think that that guy more was like to him he was yelling to himself in a way of like you're blowing it right yeah yeah because yeah. even like the director. Like, I've been on sets before where the director's, like, literally screaming at people like a football coach, and it's a really bad time, but the, I, it was uh, the guy from The Lonely Island, Akiva, was the director, and he's a very nice guy, and it's just, like, he was very chill. Yeah. Just, like, everything was very cool. It was just this guy was mad at himself. Yeah. And but that's was, what makes it even... By the way, I'm a very paranoid person, but maybe that's good, especially people... That's what I was sort of saying. I wasn't trying to dig up any dirt, because I adore that show and him and... Yeah. and, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, it's just so, it's funny that he's being harder on himself. Yeah, it's the, like, I hey, think the guy right. was like really because he was probably excited. He's like, "This is yeah. a, a, a show I'm excited to be on." And I think he, a lot of creatives are like that. Like I th- that just kind of if you're not doing what you expect of yourself to do, that though I at least that's how I am. I get more pissed at myself. Like uh, it's, it's maybe it's maybe that's a tool. Like yeah, it's an, I used to have a joke in my act. If you don't want to, if you're in a relationship and you don't want to take the brunt of being wrong, just over punish yourself. So maybe that's what this actor was doing you know yeah. he's like like may pretend you feed me a line i get it wrong and i want this i want instead of them being mad at me they're telling me it's okay so just give me the line so, i'll say it wrong all right mr glass one more time the line is we love it we gotta have it all right and action. okay well when you look lo- god damn it no i'm a stupid pile of shit i'm so dumb my life is right my kids are right and now I'm getting dizzy, and I didn't eat dinner. Huh? Uh, Mr. Gla- Mr. Glass, you're, you're out, out of sight of the camera. But you I don't... know. I'm just going to no, no, quit. No, I'm, no, no, I'm going to kill myself. No, Todd, 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 come on. Todd, you're definitely killing myself. You're great. No, you're definitely killing myself. You're great. Todd, you're great. You're, no, you're great. No, Todd, you're great. No, you're, no, we don't want you to kill yourself. It, but when this is over, I'm definitely no, going to kill myself. Todd, I don't like to make light no, of that no, topic. No, no, you're great. But see, in that situation... It's all right. In that it's situation, right. you're, you're also uh, Thank you. you're I also fishing it. for a compliment because right. you're, you're doing it. You want people to be like, no, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's and so all right. You can't tell yourself it's okay. You need a you, you need, need the other out. person. Yep. The well, worst thing is if you do that and somebody goes, uh, maybe maybe we don't have to do kill yourself as the punchline here, but something else. I'm going to quit the business. I'm going to move back. <laughs> to, and then the other people go. Oh, we thought you would never want to yeah. hear that, but we yeah. were thinking the same thing. <laughs> I'm going back to the docks. I'm sucking off fish again. Yeah. You're like, let me uh, I'll tell you guys something that happened to me on the way over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I stopped on the way over here to get a, uh, a, a kind bar. No, not a kind bar. A cliff bar. Had a couple of those also in Colorado a few months ago. I was going from Denver to Steamboat Springs. Uh, the nice, very funny uh, female comedian that I never met was opening for me. Who? And, uh, her name is uh, Salma Zaki. Okay. Denver Hot comic beats. who just moved to New York. Uh, very funny. But we're in the car, and I ate two of those, and then we're changing altitudes to crazy gas. And you know you're in a, you're oh, in a car man. with somebody, and you're like trying to sneak one and be like, oh, let's crank up the yeah, yeah, yeahs. Uh, you let's, know, like, you know, let's get some fresh air in here. Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, we're in All Colorado. We're in the mountains. Roll it down. But uh, so I stopped there at the gas station and I'm walking out and there's people getting gas. At least one person saw me do this. My keys, I fumbled my keys and I went to grab them out of the air and I missed grabbing them and uh, pretty much full force punched myself in the balls. <laughs> and and, and I, I reacted in a very much like a ow kind of way. And at least one person saw me attempt to grab my keys out of the air and so really, from far away, it just looked like I was like doing S and M to myself, BDSM to fucking to myself at the gas station yeah, on the way I, over. I have had 
I mean, even recently, I've had a couple of those moments where, like, we when we were recording earlier, we were recording the intro earlier for this for this episode. Wow, very professional. And, yeah, I know. Thank you. And uh, and at I'm, yeah, I, speaking of that, we already said the episode was great, so no pressure. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did. Say it was oh, great. You, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's good we already know, did the you. intro before we recorded. Okay, it, said we, we, had, we were, said we had a great time. Okay. We were recording the intro, and uh, we flubbed something. And I'm like, fuck. Jesus, and then I saw my hair, and I'm like, my fuck, god damn it, I fucking hate myself. And Bruce is like, Jesus, and I'm like, no, no, it's, I, it's, it's fine. Like, and he's like, what's, what's, is that for real? And I go, we'll get into it later. All right, real? Yeah, Kevin said you don't want to talk, you don't even want to talk about it. And then we, uh, <laughs> then we had a 1950s housewife and husband fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't yeah. talk anymore. So, so yeah, I'm recovering from punch myself in the balls. You know what somebody told me. <laughs> No, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it has something to do with what you just said. Yes, and you, I, you know my exp- I have the expression truth because sometimes in all the midst of silliness, it helps me. Could be tw- I might never need it, but 20 minutes from now, I might be telling a story, and it's you need to believe that the first part of it's true. So I'll just go truth. Boom, and it, everyone trusts you, and you never break it. So truth with this, you, it's not like you dipped into this horribly. You don't, it, but but you'll get it in yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah. By the way, it's not a big deal. But my friend <laughs> said, you can tell in a relationship when you watch a comedian what they think of their significant other by the way they do their voice. Mm. And I was like, oh. Oh, like their impression of yeah, them? Yeah, if it's like, if it's like nagging. And, because yeah, yeah. people go, oh, that's the wife voice. It might have been 40 years ago, but now if you tell a story about your wife, it doesn't have to be about her, what a pain in the ass she is. And if it is about something she's doing that you totally don't like or you don't like or whatever, they're... The, you, the voice either by the voice you do it shows how much you dismiss them and why are you in the relationship and yes. anybody evolved would watch it and go in 2023 and go why are you in that relationship you evolved and your vo- your wife's voice is nye, 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 nye. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld's wife voice I noticed yes. because he's big enough where we can you know we're not punching down Wait, uh, very it, dismissive how, is it, is it, is it, Hi, Gary, it's me, your wife. No, it's... Because she's 11? It's... it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, she's it's, 17, okay. It's uh, very uh, sing-songy naggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, why can't we... I used to do... Uh, I used to... In, when I was in Fresno, I'd be like, hey, my wife, let me tell you about it. I want to tell you something about that. That old lady, she takes real good care of me. Actually, she provides a lot of a comfort. Uh, well, that uh, used to be a genre of comedy, My Wife Stinks. Yeah, it was the joke, it was the world. Yeah, but I never had a it's, problem with my wife. I always like I've always I love my we've been together yeah. for for all 20, all, 23 years almost, and I I love my wife. I got no problem with her. But when I would be around comics, and I would be like, my wife, she's great, gotta love her, great lady or whatever, and they, they all look kind of like, where where is it? But that's where, why that's why Roseanne coming? I think popped so big initially is that she. Was like maybe the first, one of the first female comedians to be like my fucking fat husband, my dumb husband. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it was, she just flipped it on its ass. Were you in L.A. whenever Roseanne kind of first? Because that was like late no. mid eighties, late eighties. I was. Excuse me, I moved to L.A. in ninety. Gotcha. So uh, maybe a little before, but uh, I mean like months before. But um, well, what were you two years old? I was two years old. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> You were uh, a, a, a baby a stand-up I, I saw her on the Rodney Dangerfield special. Yeah. She was the one that that's where oh, she that's got right. it. Yeah. You know what? Wait, no, never mind. He wasn't. I thought I'd be able to tie this story together by saying that yesterday at the uh, gym, because I'm uh, in, in ex- incredible shape, I had an incredible yes, celebrity you sighting. I actually, You might actually know this guy. I would like to hear if not. Uh, if you think you're at a gym and you're excited because you're like, that is a legendary buff comedian and it makes me feel good that I'm in the gym and he's right over there because it means I'm on the right path. Who? Who, who would you think? Legendary buff comedian. Think, Legendary buff? Think uh, Collect Calls. Wait, Collect Calls? Collect Calls. 1-800-C-L-L-A-C-O-C-T. David Spade? No. <laughs> Legendary buff comedian? No, no he's not a buff comedian. <laughs> well, no, I know he did those. Oh, no, he did the credit card thing. Yeah, Wait, no. what, call, Carrot Top? Carrot Top. <laughs> in the <laughs> flesh yesterday. It made me so excited. I love Carrot Top. I saw him... Mm-hmm. Uh, a few years ago in Vegas, fucking incredible. Me too. And I went with, I went in to open for Dave there, Spade, and we went in a night early and we went and saw him. I've gone three times. And by the way, I never, you know, I never, for a while it just became the joke, yeah. which was an unfair, you know, I really, and I'm not him, so I could say it. It's not yeah. like him, he, I don't, but, but it was like, it just became, he represented everybody else, that their failures, and he had nothing to do with their failures. Yeah. And even if you don't like that style of comedy, I have no problem if someone goes, "Oh no, I, I, I'm not. I don't like prop humor at all." Yeah. That's fine. But the, but it was him. It was just like the worst. You know, he was like the crowd work comedian of his time, or the TikTok comedian of his time. And, like, and he never got. Trope. 
he, he it wasn't even taking they didn't even account for his actual jokes his actual talent well yeah and it was it just was, a trope it was just more that he was doing well and again i'm not saying you have to like that style there's there's a way yeah. to me that you could say that's not my cup of tea where i wouldn't be going hey leave him alone but um it was it was like it didn't affect them by that time he wasn't even in clubs yeah. he was yeah. not in clubs i think 92 he might have been out of comedy yeah. clubs well the stage isn't big enough for the trunks right <laughs> you gotta have a big stage you gotta i mean i'd love to have him in here but i mean where's he gonna put all this stuff when i saw his show in vegas i literally thought that i would love some of the elements it's more than just props now it's yeah. lighting cues and when he does Music. that thing with the curtains when you um, when you shut the curtains at the hotel, you know how that light yeah. always comes yes. through. But to be able to visually, and that's got to be expensive because there's like a pin spot that comes with the back of the room, and all of a sudden there's a curtain, and he's lay, and then they go to close it, and then it's there. And then they close it again and put a chip on it, and it sneaks out there. <laughs> it's a funny visual. Yes, we so whenever we went and saw him, we had a show that night at ten o'clock, and we went to his show at eight. And we had to leave just a tiny bit early, and it made me mad that I had to leave. But also leaving there, I had never been in a better mood and headspace to do comedy. Like I left there, right. and I was so excited for my own show because yeah. I was like, "Oh fuck yeah, I get to go do comedy now!" And I am like pumped up on whatever. I I loved it too, and you know I s smoke, so that's where I've termed the phrase. Oh, it's I'm sure it's great if you don't smoke. The majority of the audience probably doesn't smoke that goes to see it. But for me, it was high candy. It was so larger than yes. life, yeah. and it was so... Non stop and, and you know what else? Like, I'd like to think... I don't want to say, oh, you shouldn't judge comedy if, the, if Carrot Top is not someone's cup of tea, but I say at least fairly judge it, and I think he falls into being a... Res to be respected, that your comedy, whether it's political or social, whatever, if it's silly or if it's yeah. crap, it has uh, authenticity. Well, at some and point, his does have authenticity, yeah. you know? At some point, you have to almost disregard your own personal opinions and feelings about a comic if they're selling out rooms. You know what? I disagree with that, believe it or not. Yeah, you can be... I'm not saying someone shouldn't have to be able to say that he's not... We, we shouldn't keep using uh, a carrot top for an example because this is wider than that. Well, actually, I talked to him yesterday. We're going to bring yeah, him, yeah. We're bring him in it. right now. Hey, <laughs> he would love... What I just said was pure. I I'm also don't yeah. want to make it sound like I'm like... I, I'm defend I'm saying... Because I like it and it's funny to me. Yes. But I think you can be selling out rooms. I mean, you know, I don't want to go right to Hitler, but he did pretty well getting everyone's... <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean. No, no, you <laughs> can go. Sure, he's got some bad ideas, but have you yeah. seen the crowds? Yeah. At least have it be... Because, you know... First of all, yeah, yeah, but or as far Dice as comedians, there are comedians that are selling out that I don't like what they do. It's yeah. it's not usually going to be because they have a joke about the mall I don't like. It's usually social implications. Yes. But they could be, and I don't have to go, it sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but I'm not. I'm just saying if I have a problem with someone, I'll be able to express it, what mm -hmm. I don't like about that person. And because they're selling out rooms, you probably yes. agree with that too. You I might, do. I 100% right, agree with you that. You can still. But I, there are so many times where comics, everybody talks shit about every, you know, especially comics that are doing well, to where I will be like, well, he's doing something right because the guy's been selling out rooms. I don't agree with that. You know, forever. He, no. they, they're doing something right. If you're, if you're, in other words, hey, by the way, this is just my opinion too. So I want to. I'm not like saying this is the way it is. You said you would agree with me on everything. <laughs> yeah, we had agreement for the podcast. <laughs> and you know what? For what it's nah. worth, people watch these podcasts, and if you don't make yourself clear, somebody thinks you have a stance that you don't. And if they thought I had a stance that you couldn't hear, maybe I'll say it this way. Look, I'm not saying you could argue the numbers. If somebody goes, oh, that comedian they don't like, and they're not even doing, they're touring around the country bombing. No, that they can't say because they're not. They're selling tickets. But you can creatively disagree with what someone says, even if they're selling out 10,000 seats all over the place. Oh, 100%. You, but, but, but some people would say, now you sound like you're arguing with your because you said they must be doing something right yes right to put people in your seats yes but most people that are complaining about a comedian aren't complaining about the amount of people they put in seats they're complaining about a, a joke they told or an sure, sure. issue they had so when they go you yeah. might be doing something right you can say yeah they are doing something right because look they're selling out three thousand yes. seats and now i would like to talk about what they do right so that you can do both you can well, you know, cosby does a lot of things right he, you know, but he does some a few things wrong. One major, yeah, thing. one major, one major <laughs> thing. There's it's maybe like. the biggest thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? I I'll, let me do, I'll, and then I'll shut the fuck up on this thing. I promise. I always think you're about to come up on your word limit for that the it's, podcast. It's, <laughs> it's important. Yes, sometimes you know you shouldn't let judging someone else get in the way. Like you shouldn't let it turn into your bitterness. But yes. I think there is a time that. 
you know, when people go, oh, they're just jealous, they're just jealous. I think what's important to pay attention to is sometimes a comedian is getting made fun of deservantly. Yes. It's also important to know when it's not. But the reason it's important to know when that comedian might be getting a lot of shit from somebody or a lot of the comedians or in the comedy community, they don't respect them. It's important to know when it's real because it helps you be a better comedian. If, if there's some paths to, you know, you see they're all making fun of a comedian and it doesn't end up doing that comedian good in the long run because a lot of comedians that have been made fun of over the years a lot of them aren't doing comedy sometimes 10 years later yeah because what they were doing it it didn't even help them actually in the long run you know so there was a moment in time yeah Yeah. and authenticity is sometimes (laughs) what it is but yeah i don't i think sometimes comedians make fun of comedians and it's deserving yeah, it's yeah. deserving, and I think that's important to know too. It's not all because some people write it off. They go like, "Though someone will make fun of them, they go, you're just jealous.' No, don't don't go right to that because sometimes it is jealousy. Well, I will comics, give you, but it's not always jealousy. Yeah, like I hear, especially like with a guy like Carrot Top, where comics, oh, he's a fucking hack. He's not funny, and I'm like, well, a lot of people apparently think he's pretty funny. Yeah, you know, that's something. I went to, to the show. I love the deal. Yeah, yeah like know? I was there. It's so, on. A, I just. Very large picture. Seeing him in the same gym I go to made me feel good because I was like, "Fuck yeah, buff comedian gets it." It would be like if I saw you at like you know fucking light light bulbs unlimited or light something. Bu- <laughs> there is a, yeah, you know, there is a light you. bulbs yeah, yeah, yeah. unlimited. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Beverly I'm, Beverly <laughs> Drop. Yeah, it's, Beverly. I think it's in the same uh, complex across from my Dude, gym, right that, by Swingers. That would be hilarious. if I saw Todd there. I'd be like, "Holy shit, I'm doing the right thing. I'm on the right path. I'm bu- buying Todd light kno- bulbs." Todd knows about lighting and about you know ambiance in general. If there was, I feel good. Look at this right here. There's all kinds I of those beautiful. There. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, if if there was a creative enough uh, a commercial director who knew your your obsession with ambiance and and the the perfect room to put together a good commercial for lights unlimited. Oh, if if light bulbs <laughs> unlimited had a fucking brain in their I've head, they would I have, know light bulbs. Yeah, they would have you as their spokesperson. <laughs> it's funny, like you don't really go. Like I love you know Amazon because you know when's the last time you went to Staples to buy a ream of paper? You should never have to. Yeah, and now we don't. But some things, when I, like, I wanted those bulbs. I'm like, do they have colored bulbs that dim? Or do they have those? So I'll just go to light bulbs. And <laughs> light bulbs and <laughs> yeah. I love a store and like that. Cut. Every time I see a store, yeah, right, yeah. like, yeah, like Light Bulbs Unlimited or, like, a store that is so specific like that. Because L.A. is, like, seemingly has a lot of those very specific stores. Like, Light Bulbs Unlimited or, like, the, a lot of frame stores where it's just picture frame. It's, like, those different things. Welcome always, to the Wooden Dowel Warehouse. Yeah. It always makes me laugh because it's like, it's so funny that they're still able to be in business and it's it all, they do this Dude, one thing and that's what they do. Up. I don't know how that works. I always think that there's like, it's got to be some sort of couple where the one couple is able to provide the money for the other person to be able to financially <laughs> throw all the money away in some niche little yeah. shop that's like doilies, doilies, doilies. Well, I talked shit about a Swedish candy store that's uh, on the street by my house. I was like, oh, this fucking place. Yeah, I bet this place makes a fucking ton of money. And then two days later, uh, my girlfriend's sister walks into the apartment and she's got a bunch of shit from the fucking Swedish candy store. She's like, it's the best candy I've ever had. And that was, you know, egg on my face. It looks like I'm a fucking idiot for talking shit about the Swedish candy store. That should not be there at. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, then it's like, hey, I thought this place sucked. I was and wrong. I, I tried it. it was pretty good. Yeah, it was just, it was enough. Okay, uh, tone change a little bit, Todd. So yeah, uh, yeah, you can control. You can edit any part out of this out. Absolutely. Who's that? Who's the, calling you? It, li- it said president of showbiz. <laughs> and Todd's like, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm like I'm talking to that fine. guy ever again. I'm making my own shit. Yeah. Uh, so you starting out. You got. Oh, a, what do you want to know? I love talking about stand up. You you got <laughs> you got a couple of great breaks opening for some huge music acts. Uh, Patty Labelle being one. And uh, I'm I'm because I'm going through the book. Of yeah, no, I, I did. You know, and sometimes like you know, so much time goes by, you'll forget. And then when you look back, like when you're 30 and you look back at 19, you you just still seem 19. But now I look back and I started comedy. I was 16. Yeah. And then, then the the boring part, cut to now I'm like 19. Right, right, right. Doing comedy for three, three years. years later. And and the, <laughs> and and it puts it in some context how it happened. I don't know why I feel I need to tell this part of the story, but I do think it's what launched it in so young. And I was working at this comedy works down in Philadelphia doing open mic nights at that point, and then Thursday shows and starting to. It's, yeah, it's yeah. two and a half years later I started, and um. The owner of this place called the Valley Forge Music Fair, it was 3,000 seats in the round. There's still the Westbury Music Fair. 3,000 in the amazing. round. It was an amazing place. I get now why How every the performer, the lighting, everything was great. <laughs> I learned a lot about 
the opening of a show. Like, I remember the guy that would make the announcement from the back. But anyway, we'll get no, there. No, no, so, please. So anyway, so uh, so he calls down to the Comedy Works, and uh, I would see the guy Jim McCormick at Denny's because it was, like, right in the neighborhood, and I went to high school with his son. And he go, you ready to play the Valley Forge Music Fair? Yeah, because they notoriously had comedians. Yeah. And I would always joke because I knew it. No bullshit. I knew I'm not even close to ready. But then I feel like six months after that, uh, George Jones was there, didn't have an opening act. Yeah. And then uh, they called down to the Comedy Works and uh, they asked if I was available. And you were working at the Valley Forge in a different capacity. I was working there seating people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell, I, I feel like you really buried the lead on this whole thing when we were talking about how about country music for 20 minutes before this. And now you're like, oh, yeah, open for George Jones. Who even gives a You know, <laughs> because sometimes I don't want to be that comedian that tells stories about, look, it's not wrong of, a, of, of someone not to know like who. Now, look, if you're in music, of course. Yeah. But there's some younger people now, they don't know who some of these people are and just like i didn't know some people from my parents and i don't want to tell stories if you know if they don't know or I'm, I'm i'm paranoid about that but um george jones they i had like 15 minutes that i had to do or 20 and then they said that um you know then i found out his name was no show george of course that didn't you know that didn't make me feel too yeah. good. awesome and then the owner of the valley forge music fair left a message on my answering machine saying casually okay you'll do 15 truth is the night before the show will tell you or the day of you might do even 25 and i'm like holy shit i got so nervous three years in uh, three years in in front comedy. of three thousand yeah, people yeah yeah so you know i someone said look crowd work works and even then i didn't yeah. do a lot of crowd it's work. also three thousand people there to not see comedy to not see comedy yeah. yes well the good part is number one it the, you know it went amazing i knew five minutes in yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. five minutes in, I was like, well, that's the way to enjoy the show. Yeah, five yeah. minutes in, I was like, wow. And I worked the stage. It was a circle, you know, of course, and it moved. And I kept forgetting genuinely where people oh, were. I'd be like, it moved around, mm -hmm. yeah. And I'd be like, oh, the lady over there. And she would go, I'm over here. Because I was doing <laughs> yeah. which got a big laugh. And also, I looked 19. Even if I looked 24, that was this young kid out there. Yeah. yeah. So, but the opening there, all that show business stuff, the lights would go down. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Valley Forge Music Fair. Yeah. Poomp. Ladies and gentlemen, please kindly watch your step as you enter and leave the theater. Mm -hmm. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, an evening with Patti LaBelle and the John Coyleton Orchestra. And I would like go. I'd love that. Yes. I would want to yes. be in the room. That guy, John, made those announcements. He was head of food and services i remember that he just happened to have a good voice oh that's yeah. great but um and then it went well and he asked me how the crowd was going up the we he entered from the uh, you could enter through the crowd or the under tunnel uh, in, a, in a room in yeah, the round yeah, yeah. and he entered and he was there and he came up to me i tell you the truth i probably wasn't nervous because i really didn't know who yeah, george jones course, was which is good <clears throat> and yeah. i was friendly he go i go but 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 i said this because i knew he was somebody he goes uh, he goes how's the crowd i go you don't care. You still care how the crowd is. He goes. You always care how the crowd is. You'll never not care. Yeah. Which now, fucking years later. Yeah. You know, I almost said how many. <laughs> uh, but, uh, we, and we, then, we could cut it out in post. <laughs> and then went on to you know I did the good I did a good job and and um and and I worked then I opened for Patti LaBelle then I went to Broadway with her and opened up for George Benson and opened up for Aretha Franklin and opened up for Dana Ross and I didn't know you had so much uh, soul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you this. You know, I believe it's true. But I believe there can sometimes be an answer to it. But the danger of positive stereotypes, which I think, well, if you feed into mm. any, it's bad. So, but with that said, I will say this: um, predominantly black audiences uh, w w were fucking amazing. That's if they I liked started you, comedy. That's what I had. There was really no other option. That's what I had to do for probably the first six months. Yeah, and they were. I got spoiled because they were like they were like me. When I laugh, I have to. I get that. I do get the get up and have to repeat it yeah. i get it mm -hmm. i get it I'm, yes. I'm that way when i watch i think you should leave i have to pause it and yeah so but those audiences were great and um and i did that for a long time luther vandrews i mean just a lot of why uh, do you think martin and, luther king and martin I think, luther king i just <laughs> throw it <anybody laughs> yeah, yeah. obama yeah. uh why do you think the obvious answer is you're great and you're easy to be around but if why do you think that you were opening for these huge predominantly like soul bands 
you know, I, I think that might have just been a coincidence. I did my job. I am pleasant. I like to think I'm pleasant to be around. I'm professional. Mm -hmm. Even then, I never showed up He's late. I never went folks. a second over my time. I'm delusional. <laughs> <He's> delusional. <laughs> but I don't know. I think it probably had to do with that. And uh, But it was the Patti LaBelle thing I knew was amazing when it was going down. I didn't have to be like years later. That was yeah. just absurd. But all of those things come from... They ask you to do it once, it goes well, and they're like, hey, how about this next one? How about this next one? How about this yeah. next one? And I imagine the other people, there's probably a you know management person or whatever, be like, hey, I need a comedian, uh, a young soul brother from Philadelphia. <laughs> and they're like, I got just the guy. It's Todd Glass. That kind of thing. It, it might have yeah, traveled because they're all, you know, they're yeah. all, all the musicians yeah. are friends, and I'm sure they all talk. And I did the job, and I was... Uh, you know, I don't know. Patty LaBelle was like, you know, always so nice to me, like taking uh, me and my brothers. And it was it was uh, it was I'm glad I did. it. And by the way, from her, what I learned, I didn't my manager, the owner of the comedy club that he got me this one. He got me. They didn't call for me. They called for another opening act. He got me this Steve Young. And he got me this date. He got me the month on Broadway with Patty LaBelle. And when I saw the, t I didn't know who she was, and my manager said, "Watch her. She's on the Tonight Show tonight. She just come back with new attitude." I watched the Tonight Show like I was told to do, and I knew she was somebody. You know, I knew that she was somebody, and I could tell. And she and uh, and uh, she, her show was. I mean, she would fucking tear the fucking shit up I bet. every goddamn night. Her worst show, and I'm only saying that to say it this way. Her worst show was fucking great. And then maybe she, and I, it wasn't stand-up, but it yeah. learned me to have a high respect for every one of her shows. She would shred the fuck out of it every 110%. goddamn night. Yeah. Have That's you amazing. seen, did you, once you stopped, uh, per, like, opening for her, did you ever, like, see her randomly That's a or really good question. Only once, and she couldn't have been sweeter. I thought you were going to say she didn't remember She you. didn't remember <laughs> me. <laughs> I think I she, saying, she couldn't even remember uh, my she, fucking face. It was. I I think she would. Uh, I think I know she would remember me. I yeah. do know enough now because, you know, you're in the business long enough. I'm nowhere near as big as her, of course. But still, people say, "Do you remember me?" And they had you to their house for dinner. That yeah. you met. A, you go, of course, I remember Comedy's, you. Comedy. I mean, probably in her world too. But comedy is very hard because there's so much constant like meeting a person who you will never see again and so yeah. you're kind of constantly and it, it feels like their shit is constantly in and out and it makes me feel bad to the i think everybody learns that eventually is that you stop saying nice to meet you or nice to so it's kind of just like i, I good to you know right like fraser smith is great at that is great at the hey no matter who it is hey, hey great to see you bro. Hey, yeah, of bro. course like that kind of thing and it's, it's all, that's a good thing to learn how to drop nice to meet you because yeah. and it's it's really hard great to see you. That's she what he was in said. like a situation at a at a at a, sh at a music sh at a music thing that I went to with a friend and and then I didn't even know she was going to be there and I saw her coming down and I did that thing I went pod me ma'am like I was ballsy enough to do that <laughs> I went pod me and she went oh my dear and she took both of her hands in my face yeah and she went you something sweet something and I was like overly now let her go do her thing that's all I that's all I needed and um but yeah, that was that was uh, something. That it's was amazing. Something. Well, and I'll ask this question. This is more for me uh, than anything. So you you have these big openings. Was there ever because the the class of comics that you came up with went into the fucking stratosphere at some point? Was there ever uh, a point after you're opening for these huge acts, you're going on the road, you're making a good chunk of money, I imagine, and where there was a lull in in things? No, you know, I haven't had, like, I'm just putting it in perspective. I haven't had, like, you know, obviously the success of some of my peers. But what I have had and uh, um, has been pretty consistent. Yeah. It's been pretty consistent um, for my whole career. For my whole career, it has been, you know, pretty consistent. And uh, so that's that's good. That's well, good. Well, then I, I, I don't know what to do then, Todd. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and like by the way, that, that show in New York, I made $500 a show. Yeah, yeah. And did... Uh, seven shows a week and stayed at the hotel across the street had like a literally a $3,500 phone bill at the end of the month <laughs> I had no idea but luckily I made enough money it was a lot of money were you on the party line? no, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't even admit to at what party line I would have wanted to be on that. at uh, 19 making 500 a show? I, uh, yeah I was 19 then 
amazing. It's funny because the rate really hasn't changed. <laughs> yeah, it, it really Isn't hasn't. It funny really? <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's terrifying. No, that was a lot. It's no, funny to say that, but then, but you're right. Now you can get five hundred dollars a show too. It doesn't seem like it's that. Different. No, but it's now like back. Like it's insane that this the uh, the if you're looking at it on a graph of like cost of whatever versus like in comedian pay rate yeah. comedian pay rate has stayed the exact same yeah but like back then obviously it's like that you're like holy shit 500 fucking dollars let's go i just Even had 10 years ago it's like 500 dollars going to a wedding i was trying to think about the rate like and i really made me have to up what i was going to give because i was like wait ton of, i was trying to figure out what to give a family as a, a gift my niece yeah, yeah my niece mm. and i go well todd you got to start with when you had your bar mitzvah the good gifts were $100. Yeah. That was nice. Some people gave you 25 <laughs> but like someone gave you 100 So you're going to start with that and then really fucking up it. So it did make me yeah. much, because I was thinking, is this much, is this enough? And I'm like, not if you want to be a good gift. You yeah, know? seriously. Yeah, not, you want to stand out. You want to stand out a what, little. Uh, did you have a theme to your bar mitzvah? I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I don't know if I'm making this up or not. I'll be honest. Was I, the, was, I, was no, I didn't even know then. <laughs> oh, believe me. I look back, Bruce, and I see a big fucking b b plastic jug of Pepsi on the bar uh -huh. that they, you know, like, yeah. just, we had mine. Everyone else we had, like, at a, you know, like somewhere they had a band. And I, for some reason, wanted mine at the house. And I think it's because I went to a house party that I saw was catered, even at 12. And you were like, that's fancy. I go, I, yeah, they had, like... And they came and they set up in the garages and they had all the food prepped in there and then they came out with it. We didn't have music or anything, but uh, I thought maybe I would get more gifts because people thought maybe my parents were hurting. So, uh, yeah, that was a whole setup where you're like, if we can make everybody... Look if we like, can, yeah. keep it up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Pizza. Give Todd a little <laughs> yeah, 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 let's help Todd. Speaking of our But anyway, mitzvahs, that's it. Uh, I, I want to show you a picture. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, hey, we'll add it in post on yeah, the screen we'll here, folks. What's, what's going oh, on Jesus here? Oh, Jesus Christ. That's Hemingway. Uh, that, that's your cat? Yeah. <laughs> he was one of my bar mitzvah presents, but I got him way before my bar mitzvah. He was the best cat in the world. So sweet. Mushable. I used oh, to yeah, mush yeah, the yeah. Sh show that <laughs> face. He's so dank. Oh, yeah. is he, he was, what is he wearing? Is that it's a yarmulke. It is a yarmulke. It's a yarmulke. Oh, Jewish cat. Yeah. <laughs> you don't see that often. That well, must have cost extra. And there's my watch I also got from my grandfather from my bar mitzvah digital. Amazing. Your face is so serious in this picture, too, yeah. which I love. And yeah. I imagine like you going, okay, can we do one where I put the yarmulke on the cat? And then you go, okay, I'm going to be really serious. I'm going to be serious. Look <laughs> stoic. But yeah, Hemingway, he was just a, uh, oh, he was so awesome. This is the other picture that I, I Look found. at that. Oh, um, can I see this? The old Look days. at that. Oh, man. That's, was that, that's like a, a Beatles haircut, too. It really it's, is. it's really yeah, coming yeah. in. Yeah. This and this was only this was in 1994. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's in. That was six months before you moved here. <laughs> uh, that was six months I started lying. About. Yeah. Well, I used to have a joke that I would tell sometimes on and off stage, but it's like you know when you when you're telling stories, sand some of the years off of it. You know, I'm with a friend I went to high school with, and he's we're with some people that are younger, and he's like, "Yeah, I had to be 35 years ago." I'm like, "Shit, bring it down, bring yeah, it down." We're trying to meet people. Yeah, you never admit to more than 10 years. <laughs> yeah. but that's kind of the same. That's kind of almost in the same same vein as a comedian being like you know on the way over here uh and then they tell like a full-fledged story with punchlines and jokes and everything oh, that's... like oh crazy you, you did that yeah, on the yeah, way yeah. over here you, on the I... way over here a car crash and i had to help a woman have an abortion and you're like, you know it's funny <laughs> that seemed like a more of a uh and i'm sure not every comedian did it back in the day but it did seem like back in the day if you look at it's very amateurish now when people say yeah. it happened today or i was well, i heard this song today you don't have to say that it doesn't yeah. it adds nothing it adds nothing to yeah. it and uh, unless it's true never say that yeah. it's so funny and it seemed like back in the back long time ago they always did that yeah you know i saw this in the paper today like no one thinks your whole act happened today yeah i was on the way over here yeah and i used to say well what did you what act did you have yesterday yeah but people know more about stand-up comedy now and they know it's an act and they know you yes. travel it around and you they blah blah no blah more. unlike me I do it's all from right here all, all the time I would, I've never written anything down it's because I don't know the language oh I, I, I make up my sets I've never said the same joke twice everything <laughs> I do is 100 even right now this is an ad lib yeah, yeah. no I, <laughs> no this I wrote you're in your this you're, I wrote you are though everything is was an that, ad lib because now it's more you're I would say uh, you you are a very I mean obviously you have all kinds of different things that you're saying but you are very in the moment a lot of times and is that Something that's always been, especially on stage, when because seeming like what you're saying, it's like especially L.A. '90s, like all the, around there. Even then, was very much like so. I'm on the way over here, like that kind of thing. Very rehearsed. Was it? Was it? 
was there a lot of other people doing kind of more in the moment kind of things whenever they were performing or was it all very you know you're pulling from the pipe you're drinking the fucking yeah. cig- you know it was probably mixed it was pr- it's pro- probably mixed but um I, I like being in the moment sometimes but also i don't like to conflate it or confuse it with when i digress and it doesn't help me you know what mm, i mean like when i yeah. when i go so i'm i'm really trying to uh uh in my act work harder than i've ever worked to let myself play but also you know because i you, because here's what i think happens if the people let's say they think i'm they love me they're a 10 best crowd is a 10 and that's what the crowd is 10 seven let's say there are seven that's still pretty fucking good yeah and those seven hey if they if they if they hate you then you're not but sevens you could probably win over with a little bit of organization yeah and i feel like sometimes i lose the sevens and it's my fault maybe i'm too like silly for like uh, warm into it to, you know everything's different they see a band if they've ever been to this comedy club it's different there's only one opening act doing 15 minutes so i try to sell myself and it's in my book that i use on stage just fucking do 10 15 minutes of tight material not hurrying but like boom 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 boom, boom, and just do it win everybody over win those sevens get them up to tens but it's uh i'm very much in the vein of the idea that there's a lot of people that i see doing stand-up and if they don't have the there are people that you see uh, on stage where if somebody was to walk up to somebody in the front row and Abraham Lincoln style shoot them in the back of the head the person on stage would not be able to comment on it because <clears throat> yes. they, they would have to not pretend it didn't happen and be like and hey, you know I have this aunt who uh, she's yeah. a big fat woman you know <laughs> what? I'm glad you shifted that because now I know exactly what you mean yeah. and the answer is yeah even if I'm sticking to my joke I'll never do it the same way yeah every single time it, hey there might be a few that are 90 percent too yeah. but overwhelmingly every single time it's and that i don't mind that yeah. i like that that i'm just like if i'm telling it and one part gets a big laugh i'll expand on that a little more if it doesn't i'll move to the next thing but it's also like if like that person because at the end of the it's very like stand-up comedy it's great you know whatever but it's also like uh it has to be entertaining as well as good and clever and whatever else so it's like Keep it you down. You have to be a f- <laughs> yeah. You're shifting a lot round over there. We're me and Todd are trying to have a conversation. I apologize. Uh, but they're they're if you're not entertaining as well as like you know you have these fully formed things, but you also have to the audience has to want to look at you kind of thing, and they yeah. can't they have to not want to take their eyes off of you because they should feel in the moment, and you could be in the moment without being like oh today oh boy let me tell you that well tonight. said well said yeah. yeah yeah well said I'm surprised well never mind <laughs> I was going to mention somebody. Uh, that uh, that I noticed sticks pretty close to their notes, you know. But I would never know it if I didn't see the notes, and the, yeah. I would never know it, which is pretty cool. You know, it seems very, very conversational on stage, but they're pretty close to their notes, and I bet they're not the only comedian. Uh, but I, yeah, I like I can't do it the same way every time, and I don't think it's a better way. I just think it's my way because I have. I'm bo- I'm proud if I could add, you know, shift, but still at least be doing the joke. I, what I don't want to do is go. Well, oh, what's that over there? Make you talk about something that I don't need to talk about for thirty minutes because they're yeah. a good crowd. Does that I'll, make it? I'll, I'll, when I when I go on the road with with Pepitone, I'll see him meticulously. Eddie uh, yeah, Edward Pepperoni. <laughs> Edward Pepperoni uh, Pepitone. Uh, that's right. Uh, I will see him meticulously for twenty thirty minutes before a show. Right at his set, he's going through a very and I, I'll I'll check it out, you know, because I love you know I'm obsessed with the guy. I love I love seeing what he's doing, and he'll go up on stage, say none of it. And just go. It'll be an amazing show. But that whole set list, it'll be completely abandoned except for a few chunks. And it always cracks me up. But he's always prepared. He's always ready in case he doesn't go into that ad lib. Yeah, you you can't go off. The expression I have is, you can't go off the beaten path unless you have a beaten path. Mm -hmm. Now you hate Eddie, right? You guys have beef forever. Now look into that camera and say what you. I hate Eddie. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's a guy that does it for me, man. Just like it's art. Seeing him is. It's like seeing art. I think he he needs to do exactly what I swear to God. I'm like getting ready. I'm trying to do my act. You know, as we, we maybe you could put a clip of it in here. I would love to. Is that a, <laughs> Mr. Todd Glass. talk about people that have bad breath. I don't have any segues. They're for the weak and the old. 
Hello, audience. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're at my show. sir ardman mm. oh no Dude, it's my act but it's got a lot of production oh, around oh it. of the uh, yeah, that yes, thing. yes 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 and it's basically even without the band i have a band that's what makes it a little different but uh, if i had money and i was like you know how some people have money they produce other people that's what i'm trying to get right now but if i was the one with the money i'd produce eddie pepitone and think i get my money back it would just be putting him in new york spending the money on advertising like thirty five thousand dollars in pr Putting him in New York, maybe he does have a two-piece band just as they're coming in, and letting Eddie be Eddie. Yeah. Having just in front of a beautiful stage. Yeah, maybe you have some lighting changes that he can call on when he wants it, or he goes, when I sit in the chair. But it's no play. It's letting him do what he already does, but putting a shit ton of production around it. Scaffolding, yeah. And having, you know, blackouts, and he'll play with all that stuff, but no play. He already does a play. Yeah. And I wish somebody would hear this and go, fuck, I am going to do that because it makes sense. If, if if people went to see Eddie, if they made him be something, you can make Eddie something in New York. All you have to have is the money. Yeah. You, and you need a product. The product is fucking there. It's Eddie yeah. Pepitone. It's a proven product. You just put it in the proper setting. It's going to get rave reviews. Speaking of money, he's so... he's. I hope wallet, that helps him. His wallet... Oh, it definitely will. We're, no, live, streaming, we're uh, live streaming to him right now. Yeah, Thank no, you. <laughs> his wallet has got to be this thick. No joke. No joke, like four inches, four or five inches. So he he comes into the the parking lot. Are you full of money or business cards? <laughs> I, that's what I was Who knows? He, but he goes, this is the best I, taxi you ever. He had handed ride me. In, he had handed me his wallet and his keys and his phone and everything before he went on stage. And so where I'm 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 walking out into the parking lot and I hand him my wallet. I go, Jesus Christ! And one of the lot guys is there. He goes, Man, it's a why, why is your wallet so thick? And he goes, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> I'm doing pretty Here's well. a $2 bill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the idea. That's got to be bad for your back, having a wallet that bad. Dude, I'll shift it yeah, on one I, side. I, who knows? Those but... chiropractors will thin it out for you. Oh, oh I'd love yeah. to see Eddie getting one of those chiropractic videos where, they're, yeah, where they're, fucking, yeah, yeah. they're doing the deep, deep breath and they're fucking... <laughs> I saw somebody do it to somebody's... I, I get caught up in those. I saw somebody doing it to dogs and snakes. and I saw somebody what, with a, a big anaconda... Like a snake, you know, f- freaks have big snakes in their house as pets. Well, grab a snake and push it in really? a way, and crack a snake's back. And I, the snake doesn't react. The snake has no emotions. But there's a dog. <laughs> I saw a few with the, uh, people doing it to dogs. Oh yeah, crack. Remember, a dog's I posted neck. that video and I said, "This is me when the party has a pet." <laughs> it's just somebody doing fucking chiropractic work on the dog. <laughs> well, I saw one where he's, he takes a golden retriever and he goes. And yeah. he cracks its neck and the dog went. Looks happy. And he's like, "Whoo whoo!" He yeah. went like this. The one dog went. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> well, like, that, like he heard a radio or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Todd, you, you, uh, this is where I'm, I'm having a great time. And by the way, can I apologize for that ran on Eddie Pepitone? Can you take it out? I'm learning. Who gives a shit, Todd? If you want to talk on podcasts, it's okay, but that. Nobody gives a shit. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, we'll cut it out. We'll send it directly to Eddie. Send and then it we'll, we'll have him approve it. But you, because uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, obviously ambiance and different things. And you have a lot of uh, seemingly tips and tricks and pointers. And even seemingly for, like, if you're hosting guests or anything like that, I want to ask you, what is Ooh. something that you see people do wrong oh that's i love like that question one of the bigger things where it's like it's easily fixable if somebody was let's say somebody was nervous they're saying i'm having guests over to my house they're important maybe it's my in-laws and maybe they're snooty maybe they're from connecticut uh no that's my that's my, a true story <laughs> <laughs> yeah no they're great yeah. uh, they're from connecticut but they moved you know recently what? Well, to what uh, i have a few yeah. i have a few things that's i like that because well, number one it's not that i don't like to talk about the ambiance at comedy clubs it's just i do all the time and i'm afraid you know, it's I, yeah, and I'll enjoy it forever. But people know you as somebody yeah. who has good ideas but, on whether it's comedy club ambiance or any ambi- any making. This is, I feel very, I've felt comfortable from the moment I walked in here. Absolutely. I walked into your backyard, uh, which I told you I had a slip up the other day where I went to the wrong uh, condo and got screamed at by an Asian man through the door at 1 a.m. Uh, he said uh, he's going to call the police and tell him there's a crazy guy at his door. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, But you seemingly have a lot of uh, ideas. On how thing and I don't want this to sound rude at all, but you have an idea on how things are supposed to be, and it seems like it makes you not quite angry, but it, almost disappointed when somebody does it wrong. <laughs> so if you, were, oh, wow. if somebody was entertaining guests at their place and they were like, "What are some easy things I could do to make this?" I'll better? give you a few. 
One, I'll start, but I'm I'm being serious. But I'll start with this. But it's it's the it's just an overwhelming thing that most people don't do. And by the way, most things that make people come through, like the way you're asking it, yeah. that they 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 just don't pay attention to the things that they don't like other places. In other words, like when I talk about if you're having a wedding, most people do not. They didn't go to a wedding when they were taking pictures outside on a hundred degree day or waiting outside and love it and go. We have to do this. They just do it even though they hate it because it's what they saw. It's what or and they they think of the pictures and they think they don't think back to that uncomfortable feeling. So what I'm about to tell you, people already know. They just don't go. Let me not do this. So they hate it somewhere else and then they have it happen at their house. And that is noise where your bathroom is. If your bathroom is it, mm. look, if it's down the hallway and look, you don't do it. You don't do it how do i know that because the odds are i could be wrong but very little if i'm gambling but so i turn i turn whenever i'm going to the going a big number two maybe even a number three yeah. the way i do it is i go on my phone and i'm looking i pretend i'm looking at you know tiktok okay, yeah. dogs getting that's their what you're doing that's what you're doing but what but that's, what, it's a solution to a problem that you're yes saying. yes you should there is a place i could look if it's if you have the money you just when you get a fan you make sure it's a loud fan and also there's two i'll go long on this actually but i'll but i'll also tighten it up if if you're building a house or you have money and it's your house and you're putting a fan in get a fan that really moves air bathrooms only smell because yes the, because most people all people even at the gym when i smell the bathrooms over there i go they just smell because they didn't put in a 500 600 exhaust fan over the toilets that yep. you hold a piece so when you put a fan <clears throat> but if you can't do that to your house let's say you you know you rent the house go buy a cheap box fan yep Put it somewhere, paint it a cool color, shove it in between the... You will find a place, if it's in the bathroom or out of the bathroom, it's on all night. It's it's almost hidden in a way that no one's going to think, oh, turn on the fan. It's just on. And uh, that's so important and dark. And also, these days, you should have that potpourri, that the, the, yeah, the drops. Yeah, OZM absolutely. You, handle. The drops. I like the idea, what you're talking about. Poopery, maybe, yeah. maybe even you put small speakers in there and it's almost like a rainforest cafe where you walk in and it's like Whatever jungle, you jungle can, noises you know and what? birds. I never thought about that. That's that's actually another really good point. If you have a shelf in there, you could put the jungle noise in the rain and that's probably easier than a box fan. So yeah. you know what? You just can't, it gave... Can't, you just I, brought it up in the 21st century. I have a Bluetooth speaker. And I, Put it in there. with. Uh, I, but you're right. Not loud music. Pornography. It's, no, the, <laughs> <laughs> people go, loud uh, pornography. What you said, the rainforest was perfect. A little, some noise, some rain, just some white noise that people aren't petrified. And again, the the it's I never said this before, but the drops because if you have the potpourri spray with the drops, do you drop it in the you toilet? drop it yes. in before, and everyone knows it. But if you see the spray, I just learned that the spray you're supposed to do before too. I thought the spray meant okay, it's no, potpourri. you do it, and then you're like, oh god, I'm humiliated. No, now they're, I they're both out. go in the toilet. So I put the drops, and I have you know, but that I like see, that I do idea. It in before, right up the corn, and yeah. then I sit down, and then <laughs> yeah. it's good coming out. Now, if I'm at a friend's house, I'll be like, I'm just gonna watch this fart compilation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. I hey yeah. A restroom, I get you. You mind if I keep oh. watching this? <laughs> and I, just, I go in there and well, it's humiliating. I, I have to burn a whole roll of toilet paper. Oh. You know, I'm even, I'm even conscious to the point where if I'm going, if I'm even peeing, I'm trying to hit the sides because yes. I don't. The sound, the sound, even more to your point, where it's obvious you don't want people to hear you farting up a storm into the toilet because that it also <laughs> echoes it and makes it into a louder thing than it has to be. But even the the sound of Anytime, I don't even want to know that much about anybody. <laughs> so anytime that I hear a person, even if I, my, it's it's my own pee. father, and you're hearing pee hit the water, it's 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 awful. You picture him touching his penis. Yeah. Oh, touching yeah. Him. yeah. But, uh, you have boy, made me paranoid boy, about that because I never even thought about that before. And you told me that once, probably a year ago. That you That's, had a strong stream? No, that you're no. like, I hate it. If I, I can well, hear it somebody your, pee, your pee, I know, yeah, yeah. but every time I've used your bathroom since then, I'm always trying. I'll dip my dick into the water. <laughs> yeah, well, so I, try, I know no, what no, you, no, you mean. Around. It's like, and it's not even a judgment of the other person, but you like, it's like when I, I can picture someone in that bathroom and I've heard them and then I, you go like, uh, you think like, oh, I didn't ever hear them pee before. Like, you yeah. know, that's personal. It's almost like, by the way, I shouldn't say my bathroom because I would have the fan on. But, um, <laughs> that's right. Uh, but, you break uh, the knob off and the I'm wall. And I'm going to throw a few other things. Number one, I, I'm going to move by this quickly, but always, you think houses help somebody. 
may, maybe they don't know it does, but like darken it. If you have your bathroom, darken it also. Every light in the house. Most people, their lights are too bright. They have yeah. no idea. But here, I'm going to give you one with that, quick one. With that one. bathroom light thing, uh, my girlfriend will make fun of me because if it's daytime, I will... Turn, keep the lights off in the bathroom if I'm taking, even if I'm going to the bathroom if I'm showering, because it's nice. It's a relaxing amount of light. And if it's, you know, that's coming through the window, you're showering. There's perfectly enough light already. And if you turn on that fluorescent light, it's harsh and it's everything else. Yeah, unless We're not you have so dimmers. different, you and I, Tom. Yeah. Tom, Tom. Tom, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go after low hanging fruit. You messed up my name by accident. You know what my name is. Yeah. Do the same for me if that happens later. Absolutely. Okay. You both hear me. Um. I'm. I think this is a good one, and it's more specifically for dinners. Now, look. If you know how to present dinner and take things out of the oven and do all that, then then do it. I'm. Not, I'm saying if you're nervous already, this is tips almost from my uh, some of them from my friend's mom. Uh, have things that can be served room temperature. In other words, of course, a salad, if it's that type of salad. But there's also dishes like a green bean dish with the garlic in it, but it's room temperature. That is, will buy you so much. Sometimes you can have almost everything but the main dish, a room temperature dish, or one. Also, bread. I'm not saying taking garlic bread out of the oven is going to end all. But if you're already nervous, it's one less thing to do that the sides are on the table. Even as they get there, the bread is on the table. All that stuff. And one more thing. For Thanksgiving, she, my friend's mom used to say, Tari, she still says it, you can get away with a lot of wiggle room if 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 maybe something ends up being room temperature that shouldn't be. Like maybe the turkey, or you're nervous, the stuffing, and you're sweating, and you're trying to keep it all hot. She goes, have, spend the money on the gra two gravy bowls, not more than just a candle. There's something where it's like, mm. it's almost like a little sterno cup yeah, yeah. under there, just for the gravy. Because if your gravy is piping hot... It it fixes can fix everything. a lot of things. That's very smart. So I was like, you know, okay. Because that the makes me nervous. Every Sunday, uh, me, uh, my girlfriend, her sister, and then another couple, whenever we're available, we'll do like a different, uh, somebody hosts a thing, and it's like a, call it supper club, whatever. But when it's my turn to do it, I'm. that's my biggest concern is trying to play the fucking drums with all the different things that you're making to keep them all at the same place. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a nightmare. I have to have it done. I bought, when I used to have more people over for dinner, I actually ended up buying two chafing dishes because that's the only way I could do it and, and breathe. It, the food was in there. It was lit, and it was just, you had two of them, and it would have all the food in there that wasn't room temperature. And uh, and also, I can't, uh, you could hit me over the head when you, but I I think <laughs> these are helpful. That's why I, I am excited to yeah, get yeah, them. Yeah, I know. I it, think they're it is, tangible. It is very very it's tangible. Because there's stuff that I hear all the time, and I'll hear it at a random place, and it's literally something that sticks with me forever, and some, I'll even forget where I heard it. But like, no, now i got to do it like yeah. that because I heard somebody else say. Because you would think the room temperature things is a no-brainer, but you know what, to tell you the truth, I didn't think of it till somebody told me because I was nervous. They're like, I just thought, no, you have four. There's, that has to be hot. That has to be hot. Garlic bread's in the oven. Uh, but uh, if... I'm not good at cooking, but I'm good at presenting. If you're a little nervous and you have to make something that, you know, you, you know, you don't even have to say. You can be honest. It's all the presentation. Two quick things. One, go buy a Stouffer's lasagna. But then I, like, went to the cheese place and got fresh grated cheese. Look, those Stouffer's lasagnas taste pretty good anyway. Yeah. If you know how to cook it and you put it in. But if you put the fresh cheese over the top and then put it in the oven. And also meatloaf, the same thing. If you take, like, three meatloaves, put them on a cookie sheet, that you buy at Vaughn's. You, they know how to make meatloaves. You go buy three turkey meatloaves. You just put cheese on them, put them in the oven. They come out. You look like a hero. You look like a hero. And I slice them long ways, That's not actually, the short ways. Do it you, looks like, uh, makes it look like Whenever long. you do the presenting, and maybe it's changed over time, do you say, look at this thing that Todd fucking made. Look how awesome Todd is with his uh, lasagna. Do you, like, if you're, do you... Present it in a way of like, oh yeah, I got this, doctored it up, and now look at us. Or are you like, isn't, a, isn't, oh, isn't Todd awesome? That's everybody? such a good question. Isn't Todd awesome, everybody? <laughs> yeah. if, if it doesn't come up, yeah. I don't say anything. I Until don't someone's it. like, Todd, this is so if good. If they really go, I go, well, you know what? I, I want to be a forthright with you. They're the Vaughn, and I'll tell them. And I go, and I just go get some really good shredded cheese, and I put it over the top. Because it's not like I'm serving them. Uh, but if it doesn't get brought up, if they're like, holy shit, this is good, and that's just it, and like, wow, this is good, then I might, might not ever bring it up, yeah. you know? But, uh, 
And has that changed where when you first started doctoring, were you like, I think I <laughs> like nobody, nobody can know. I got to let, I got to keep it. I, I got to let people think that I'm, or no, no, maybe I, you've grown more comfortable with yourself. I think I almost always wanted to tell too many people right away. Like it was like, I wanted to share like, Hey, guess what? It's not like I'm saying, Hey, that food's rancid. It's just, yeah. but, um, you want to get it out of the way almost. Yeah. Just yeah. so I used to, uh, now, now it's 50, 50. If I bring it up, I just don't want, if they're really going off on it, it's, I'm not embarrassed of it. So I'll just share it with them and go, Hey, by the way, here's what that is. You yeah. know, uh, but uh, how you doing? Uh, hey, oh hey, folks! He's tapped in. He's trying to figure I, out about his fan. I love, to- <laughs> but I love talking about uh, this stuff. It's it's fun and it's fun to have people over and create a really cool vibe. Yeah, uh, it's fun to hang out in it. And also, the less money you have, the, the more important it is to create a cool vibe at your place because you, I guarantee you. You will hang out there more. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes you can do it with colored bulbs. You know, you could be in an empty room with no pictures, but you have a sofa and two chairs. Mm. But if that room is orange and there's two candles on a table, that's it. Immaculate. That's, you know, you, cleanliness matters. But yeah. you have a room. It's literally you don't have time. I'm going to be here for four months. If it's yeah. orange because you have an orange bulb and there's a sofa and two candles in the middle, now it's artistic. Yep. So you, th- my friend told me that took a lot of my advice. He goes, you know, I know what you mean now. I'll be like, people come here once and they'll be like, let's go hang out mm-hmm. at, at Vinny's yeah. house. See, and I, so in my room, some people would, might call this tacky, but I have a LED strip light around the whole thing. And I don't use it every day, but if I'm... Let's say I'm working in there on something. I want to turn off the main light, turn on the white light a little bit lower. Or if I'm watching a movie in there, I want it to the blue light. It's more comfortable. If I'm making sweet, sweet premaritals to my lady, red light. You got. Co- I like that. <laughs> Anytime you can change lighting is is a big deal. And also, if you're not going to be at a place, you talked about like things that I think are tangible, especially if you're not going to be somewhere long. Look, you can have buy a piece of material that's 12 foot by. 20 foot or 10 foot and fold it in half when you need half of it or fill it, pin it up and lighting in a few of those things around a place you can you don't need a lot i think the less you buy the better you know these days and young people are doing that they're not buying as much shit to fill a crappy apartments up with yeah, yeah. they want to, but you can still while you're there do a lot of things that are cheap and take up no room and you know uh, I think you could help people a lot I think that you should you could even do a thing where people send in pictures of their shithole apartments and you're like you know what this there that there the other thing there or, yeah. you, just, or you just fucking show up in the middle of the night and say like, a, like you're doing a beyond scared straight and you wake them up <laughs> I don't want to do you know what it is I'm never interested in any bits that go around it like you know what my friend said, and it, and it, and I hope this is, applies to just more of this story, but to anybody that's thinking about doing something these days. And I'm glad my friend said it. He goes, hey, look, you pitched it. That was years ago. And you don't pitch it now. You do it. He goes, if you think you have a knack to that, he goes, which you do, and, I, and which leads to the answer probably why I won't do it, but at least it's an honest answer. He goes, you just do it on Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. G- g- go go do it to this thing go help somebody or a friend or there's a comedy night. Pick something you want to fix or maybe two things. Go out and do it. And then you have the before and the after, and yeah. it'll be what the fuck results. But I don't want the work. That's the reason yeah. I won't do it because it's the work that the. Well, you've already done the work on your own place and your own stuff, and it's I imagine constantly changing where you change your mind about something this or that. Well, but no, it's, it's the you've it, done the work to create your space, and you're like, ah, oh, now I got to go out and create your fucking space. It's the part of it that isn't fun. The the, the in other words. If I did it on TikTok, let's say I go, I'm just going to low budget, go shoot it. My friend has just moved into his place. I'll go there and do a three minute makeover on his place or a minute. You have to do the work. If I was on a show that had a budget, you're not doing the, you're just saying, okay, we need to get this. We yeah. need to get that. You then don't have to there. go to Lightbulbs Unlimited yourself. Yes. That's you right. send somebody to right. Lightbulbs. You can send someone to the Fabric Mart <laughs> and go buy some, you know, some, some 20 foot of material. You don't, I don't want to do that part of it. So that's why I probably won't do it. But I wish that I, because I know it would probably do very well on, on Instagram or TikTok. I think I have some really good ideas and um, I could uh, do different one every week. You know? I, I love I love the idea of like doing something on Instagram or TikTok because I'm I'm enjoying the idea of doing something as a season. Like I've launched multiple podcasts, and the idea of having to do something consistently, like oh you're gonna do that show, go pitch it, and hopefully it runs for 20 years. Like the idea of doing the same thing forever and ever, it it kills me. But the idea of doing it like one thing on TikTok 
one thing on Instagram, a season 10 episodes yeah. of a podcast or something. Oh, for what it's worth, what my friend was saying was if it would lead to, because, hey, look, everybody, there's even though, you know, I think it's great when someone could be just a star on TikTok or Instagram, and I'm not disputing that, um, but it also can be a launching pad to mainstream, more mainstream, mm -hmm. where there's a budget. And they so that's what they're saying. If you want it to end up on a show now, just do them. That, that way your manager just says, hey, go look at his Instagram account. Go look at his TikTok account. And they figure you yeah. out. It's a little more work that way, but it's certainly the way to express who you are without having to, you know, go pitch your, go, go have six things that explain who you are that are, some are a minute, some are two, one's 30 seconds. I'm going to, you know, whatever. That's what he was sort of saying. It's yeah. also even kind of the same thing where it's like now to get booked on shows, if you're like hitting somebody up, hey, I want to do your stand-up show. It seems... Um, counterintuitive to be like you're messaging somebody on instagram and you're like hey i want to do your show here's this is what i do this is here's a video thing where really you're like hey i want to do your show they can click on that you go and then they could be like oh they're here's rather than like here's a five minute video here's a fucking million one minute things of me talking about some guy's hat you know that's right <laughs> right um what you were saying about you know diff doing different things, I think this is sort of what you're saying. But I apply that to Conan. Like, you know, I hope he, yeah. I always hope he's happy where he's at. Like, I know for a while it had to be yeah. Like, meaning like, to me he's the he's a stud, and that's probably a better way I can say that. But you know you know what I mean. Like, yeah. he's the real deal, and I love that he. I wonder if he enjoys his life better. That now he can like, go do something on Netflix or he can yeah. do this project and then do something else. He's not stuck in that same formula that might get a little redundant after a while. Just do cool ass projects after yes. cool ass projects. Well, he doesn't have to go to work every day. Yeah. That kind of yeah. thing. Where it's and like still put out content and do really well and be probably more creative. Yes. I, want, I hope that's fun for him. I hope he's enjoying life because I'm enjoying watching whatever he has to put out. Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the cool things about watching you doing so much stuff on TikTok nowadays is you're... All I the mean, dances, all the lip sync. All the lip oh, yeah, all the lip I would do that too if I could. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you no, definitely Yeah, the could. stuff, uh, uh, the like hidden... The hidden... Uh, the, 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 yeah, it's incredible. The it's so Snapchat. Fun. What was that? He always says it's a throwback to like some other formula of the hidden camera like, yeah but you know, it's like yeah, this no, guy it's... won't stop talking yeah, <laughs> it's that. like you just like hey what's up guys no, I, I, I love seeing you do that because I as much as I've loved the Todd Glass show your podcast that, that went for what 12 years mm -hmm. um, as a person who's had long format things I've done podcasts for years and years there is something about the can, the redundancy of like doing having to do the same thing you kind of feel like you're you're stuck into a specific mold. So then when you have this platform now where you can do anything, it's so much it's free. And and, and and it's not it's not in place of podcasting. I still think podcasting is one of the best things that ever it's it's just what a creative outlet for yes. so many people. And I would still go back to it. I miss being around the table. But for me to be honest, because it was fun every week. I never got tired of doing it. I'm glad that's my story. It was just such a creative space to be able to be silly. Yeah. But I wouldn't hit as many people with it. And doing the TikTok, I always, it's funny, in my head I think TikToks. He puts it on Instagram too, but to me that's how I met Chad, through wanting to build a TikTok account. And Chad Maxwell um, is... Uh, it was hitting more people, which I get, and I don't. I I feel like I have to preface everything. I don't want anyone to get ahead of me and think I'm saying that no one has the attention span to watch anything long today. That's not true. They watch movies and they watch shows and they binge watch hours and hours and hours. But also, sometimes smaller content can be appealing. That's all I'm saying. Because yeah. a lot of people go, "Oh yeah, no one will watch anything." They don't even hear what they're saying. It makes no sense. But it's a cop out too. Though, it's a, a cop bit. out. Absolutely, yeah, they, yeah, oh, that's why. But exactly, it is because they 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 can watch. But also, along with binging things that are hours long, uh, I, I understand why it's easier to tell someone if they like me. Before, if you liked me, how do you tell a friend? You go, oh, you should listen to his four hour podcast. There. <laughs> All right. So yes. they, okay, now they can go. Oh, go look at his uh, Instagram account. Go yes. look at his TikTok account. And learn about me. I don't. I'm not mad at that. I'm liking that it's happening. And if young people are going to be sometimes in, being introduced to stand up on TikTok, I'm happy to be a part of it. You have always embraced I ha the younger I generation. I've always. Uh, uh, that's always been and admirable. not like some other comedians do. Well, I in mean, a good way. But there's yeah, right, right, right. 
<laughs> yeah, when I say embrace, I don't mean embrace. Yeah. Uh, but you've always embraced the younger comics, and you've had them featured on your shows, and you've taken them on the road, you've given them work. And you know I, why? I think that's amazing. First of all, they're, they like talking about stand-up. It's not mm -hmm. a mercy mission. It's self-fulfilling. Why I'm, at least in my head, the way I look at it, first of all, it's nice to be nice to people. I'm insecure. When I walk into a room, the more love that's offered is the more comfortable I'm going to be. I can get yeah. very nervous going into situations. You're great. So when there's love thrown at me, so maybe with all the mistakes I've made, and God, I've made plenty, one thing that I figured out, well, you're going to get love if you give it. Mm -hmm. So... And also, you become a better comedian. It's not a mercy mission. Like I said, oh, they'll learn from me. I'll fucking learn from them. It is both ways. I'm not saying I don't have anything to offer, but I also have something to gain. Yeah. Uh, besides just the friendship and comedians are the yeah. best thing in the world to hang out with. There's nothing better. But also, I think it makes me a better comedian to hang out with uh, younger comedians. Absolutely. Um, you know well, what? I was, sorry, I was thinking whenever we were talking about what you're doing online right now. I think... Well, kind of like what you're saying with podcasting where there's kind of like an infinite uh, amount of like things you can do with it. The thing that because I was watching a lot of them yesterday and I think that the thing that makes it so funny and makes it so good and it's something that you're good at is that you can see that because in the thing you're basically playing a stranger. Kind of like yeah, over, they're and all the same. In those, but, but in those you are, videos, but yes. you are a no matter whether like you're doing uh, like you're at the yeah. table or you're a campfire or at yeah. the Uber drive. It's like you're a stranger and you're a weird stranger. And it's like there's kind of infinite uh, amounts of angles to like oh this guy is this oh we met this guy and he's acting this way. Yeah. There's kind of a million different things you can do with it, and it's kind of a uh, what you're saying of uh, with bringing. Like talking to new comedians and new people that with weird like at the fucking airport or wherever with all the different strangers it's like everybody has their own little thing and is weird and you're like oh here's this new it's kind yeah. of an infinite amount of characters yeah. or anything it, that it, it's the restaurant or it's the uber driver yeah. and the, those you know those do very well but one thing that i'm glad that chad feels the same way chad maxwell is a is a, a, a influencer i get no if you're just because you're in tiktok that doesn't mean you can be on there and not be an influencer or are yeah you just an i influencer? think it's i think influencer is a kind of a catch-all term yeah, yeah that makes it so easier. anyway and and i met him through a friend of mine chad uh through my friend cam and, and oh, i, I said so you're gonna say you met chad through chad i met <laughs> i met cam, chad. chad through cam and he had like five hundred thousand people and I was like, during the pandemic, watched TikTok and really fell in love with it. I was like, I knew very quickly, not right away, that it wasn't just the dances. Yeah. I knew right away. I was like, oh, that's like someone that watches TV and, and the, or, the, the, you know, they're older when I started comedy. And they'll be like, all you see on comedy is dirty stuff because all they were watching was the stuff. That's what, but so they didn't really have it. So I knew very quickly. And that's, and then I go, wow. And, I would see a video I was jealous of, a quick 30-second video that they're yeah. editing on. I'm like, that's funny. Yeah. And even some of the dances, this is what I, I have a joke about this in my act. I go, I don't watch it for the dances. I do too. Sometimes <laughs> they'll do this stupid little dance, a family or someone that, and I'll be like, I that's so cool. How'd they know that song would be? But I was flailing. I wasn't really knowing you know, the, the how to post things. And I met Chad Maxwell and it fucking made my life so much better. He comes over once a week or we repost my old stand up, but and it's fun. He comes over here, it's so much easier. It's like he comes over here and basically I'll smoke some pod. Sometimes I'll invite friends over, but instead of inviting them over and doing a podcast, we just make content. Yeah, and it's you can kind of do an infinite amount in yeah. uh We get high, we have an idea, I go, Oh, why don't we jump on stage? Sometimes I've planned out ideas, other times the the things that I do in here and I know, like, me showing, oh, here's my idea how to make a, my own version of a burrito. They don't do as well. My stand-up clips don't do as well. But he agrees and I agree. You do them. Because yes. they look at your page and they should know who you yeah. are. Yes. Even a social opinion. He goes, put it on there. So they know who you are. You don't just stay. And, and, uh, and I'm glad that he feels that way. Yeah, it all adds. It all, it yeah. yes. Yeah, it's, I mean, even, so my, my girlfriend is a stand-up. But her sister, their twins, is not a stand-up. But she does tiktok stuff she has a trillion followers but she whenever we were all living in portland for a year like during the pandemic same thing for a year not quite every day but pretty much every day she posted this thing and that thing the other thing and like did okay here and there like uh, this thing popped off a few followers but i think that whenever we moved back to la about two years ago she maybe had ten thousand followers and then she like figured out what it is she's trying to do 
then started doing those. She does like videos in her car where she's just like kind of talking shit. And who is like, this? Uh, my uh, girlfriend sister, Ali Ryan. Sister. Ali Ryan. Allie if you Ryan? saw her video, you'd be like, oh yeah, she's. I mean, she okay. has like a, almost a million followers now. But from doing that, then doing that every day, it just more and more and more and more and more. And then forever, I was like, dude, I was like, TikTok is great, but you also have to be putting these on Instagram. She's like, oh, I will eventually. And then she started doing that and went from like four thousand followers maybe to like 170,000 in like three months. Like it's, it's crazy when people love it. And it's like, it's, but it's kind of, it's all fishing kind of. Yeah. It's like every time you post a thing, that's what's fun about it is like, sometimes it's disheartening because you're like, oh, fuck, I put that out there and I liked it and nobody gave a fuck. And then, but it's like, you're throwing this hook in and you're like, maybe I'll catch a big one. Right. Or maybe I'll catch nothing. But I and love that you're posting multiple different styles of you because I, I don't think you're a guy who should be shoehorned. No. Into one particular and you, thing, and, and you and you could make it look. I don't know why. Like sometimes I ask myself, why can't you just do the TikToks? Why do you have to give your dissertation on why it's met with such resistance? Because that's interesting for me to talk about. And I guess I hope I'm not deluding myself. I hope it's because I can take someone that's teetering, going down this path of oh, now you got to do do TikToks. Look, the old way. And how far back do you want to go? 30 years ago, okay, you didn't have to do all this shit. But a very small slice of people had success. Yeah. So don't act like if we go back to the old way, it's going to be nice to you. Yeah. But it, it's all adapting, too. It's can it, you adapt to the new thing? Yes. And by the way, my question is why not happily? I don't, I think it's like a drug, and most people, it has nothing to do with it's not right for them. Because the people that are like having, you know, giving resistance, oh, now you got to put up my friend who, who knows the side I'm on. I always think people won't come to me with any standard <laughs> complaints. He goes, yeah, that's so much content. I go, you're making a bigger deal about it than it is. We get together, we're silly. I'm not editing together short films. We, when you know, and as you go, I'm having a ball doing it. My podcast was more work. And I again, I yeah. love doing that. So the, the content, I'm not exhausted and I'm not afraid of throwing out material. I'll write new material. What, oh, can you imagine if I put all my material out on TikTok and then people are coming to see me in 5,000 seat theaters, then what am I going to do? Write more material. Yeah. Why yeah. am I yelling? Or do the, honestly, do the same shit. People you like can it. do. By the way, if people like you, that's what I you can do half, and they would love you. They that's want, always some been my thing. Want to hear it? Some would. I really believe if you, and I'm not putting no pressure on a comedian to write new material. You, these guys that haven't written a new joke in 50 years, well, I don't know how creative fulfilling Sorry, that could we're be. Both, we're both sitting right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you go to see a comedian, I know because I went to see comedy. Well, I started. And if I went back a year later, I hope I'm not just delusionally remembering this to, uh, to you know, to make my writing, you know, look like I have a good work ethic. But if they did half new material when I saw them a year later, I was thrilled. I was like, yeah, they did a lot yeah. of the old stuff, but they had like half new stuff or any big chunk of new stuff. Well, Gaffigan so, will still do the po hot pockets. No, he doesn't thing. anymore. He doesn't. Well, no. for a while he was doing. He did it at the end because people wanted it, and then my manager they'd riot if they did if he didn't. Yeah, but they they're fine. They they uh, man but that people, guy. Right it's a lot of new material. Yeah, he does. Well, his wife does. His, <laughs> his he wife, doesn't write wife, shit. Wife no, they used to co-write some stuff, but I don't think anymore. But yeah, they did. They did co-write stuff for a but while. But I think it's okay to have some of your uh, your hits in there. You know. Yeah. And, oh, and, it's whatever you want to do. By the way. Yeah. Uh, so what I am saying, what I like, I'm not saying everybody should. Everybody should do exactly what they want. But I find I enjoy life better. I always say, if I go back to a club in a year, I hope forty percent of it, solid forty percent, is new. And the other part that's old is going to be different anyway. So I hope I'm not deluding myself to yeah. maybe someone will go. He hasn't. It's weird. It, like it should be. I don't know. It's supposed to be. Like obviously, it's supposed to be different, and you're supposed to be. That's what's so hard about like doing it for especially so long is like you're supposed to be growing with it all the time. And it's like I've only been doing it like ten years, but like I did a taping a few months ago and then now it's going to come out soon and I'm going to have to watch it to give them whatever and it makes me sick even thinking about watching it because I'm like oh I fucking sucked then now I'm better now I'm <laughs> now I feel good about myself where now I'm going to have to watch myself from three months ago and be yeah. like you fucking piece of shit look at, look at you <laughs> I said to Gary Goldman once which this might make you feel better he goes I go when am I going to stop watching my old self and hating it now talking about longer than three yeah. months back but in that same genre if that word exists uh, but I said when am I going to stop watching watching my old stuff and hating it he goes well hopefully never yeah and i was like oh yeah he goes what do you want to be like oh we know when i was the best six months ago <laughs> yeah yeah so, man i was great back then oh yeah. a year ago i was better <laughs> yeah anyway uh could you edit out that part when i yell because i think i've been doing a good job of 
<laughs> Volume <laughs> control. You, you, you pivot me in a good direction. Things I've talked about, but you pivot me in a specific area that I haven't exhausted. What am I, a but, piece of shit over here? I don't do any good. I don't you. Do, I don't do any good pivoting for you. You, you I love. All right. You, I know already. I hang out at your, you know, you come here. We hang out a lot. We hung out three nights ago. I know. It was great. It was I, fun, right? I, I, I yeah, Kevin in. said you guys did karaoke. With yeah. John Brand Wagner was here, and I got, we got the iPad hooked up, and it was, it was, it was fun. It was, at one point, uh, Todd looks over at me, because we had smoked. I haven't been smoking very much, so it was like, uh, it was really hitting me. And you he guys had a over, cigarette? <laughs> yeah, yeah so, and, and Marlboro Red. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, John's on the stage doing his, like, third song or whatever. Todd looks over and goes, hey, should we take it easy on the music? Because he could tell I was a little too high. Oh, and, uh, sometimes <laughs> it could get loud, and I think, like, is it time to now have quiet? Yeah. But we yeah. were singing. I was enjoying John Brand oh, Wagner love- singing. He found his, there'd be nights when he would just sing from his guts, and uh, I liked it. It was a fun, it was a fun having Are the- you a... Uh- if you, because I love karaoke, but it's whenever you. The, I'm curious what your opinion is on. So, do you, with karaoke in mind, I never do it. Is my answer ever, and I never really? have. Outside of your own place? No. Yeah. Really? I've done it at a place where you have a room. See, that's what I'm. I'm. I'm almost in the opposite vein that I think that karaoke. I'm. I think it's better whenever it's weird strangers and because when it, a karaoke night in general, I just went to one in Santa Cruz after our show across the street uh, at a bar attached to a bowling alley, and there was very weird people, and it's usually yeah. always very weird. But people. that's what makes that fun, and right? It's, it's. I love it. I Even if you don't sing, though. I can't get enough. Even uh, if you do you sing too, oh yeah, I, I, see, I wish I could. I love. I can't get enough. Like, what songs will you do? Uh, my number one go to every time if I'm going to do one song is "Dead or Alive" by Bon Jovi. Great song. Uh, you know, and I'm the a, crowd loves that too. Yeah, because there's a, a call and return. Sometimes uh, if I do two songs, I'll do "The Wanderer," but you know, uh, I'm the type of guy who likes to roam around uh, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. But there's, and this is, I saw something at a karaoke thing that I. It's for some reason to me. Is so beautiful for some reason. We didn't even know there was karaoke. We go in there for dinner and we're sitting down. It's just it's at the Belmont on La Cienega. It's like a bar. Like we just go in there, get some, you know, fucking wraps or whatever. We get some drinks, and the guy, a guy comes in, and he's setting up his laptop. And we're like, oh, he's going to set up karaoke. And this guy has long, uh, in between white and blonde hair and a ponytail. He's probably like. In at least probably early 60s, uh, backwards hat, long white flowing hair, ponytail, flannel, uh, j- j- maybe shorts, or I believe, of like something like kind of cut off shorts. You could tell this guy's been in it, you know? And he sets it all up, he sets up his whole thing, and then he opens up the computer, and you see his uh, login for his computer where you have a username where, you know, Todd or whatever, but his was Rockstar. And then oh, he yeah. logged into it, and it, <laughs> I saw. I, that was the only moment in my life I've ever wanted to write a book because I was like, "That is, there nope. was something about it that was so beautiful <laughs> and so it, the world is, has been cruel to this guy a little <laughs> bit, and, you know, and yeah. like and it's not, and he, but in his mind, he's that's who he is and that's what he does. He's there to set up the karaoke, and if I wasn't sitting perfectly in that, I was the only one who saw it, and. I, if I wasn't sitting in that seat, I wouldn't have seen it. And there was just really something about it that struck me. Everybody should have a little bit of that. Yeah. Like uh, that self-confidence to yourself. Yeah. You're a fucking rock star. Yeah, it's literally like if he wrote it on his mirror in his bathroom and it said you're a yeah, fucking yeah, rock star. Yeah, I need a little of that. But I get I, a tattoo. Yeah, yeah on yeah. your forehead backwards. Yeah, so then yeah, you look in the mirror. <laughs> well, we, we got to wrap up here pretty soon. But before we go, uh, tell us the biggest dirt you have on the most the famous celebrity you know. Well, one time... <laughs> What, was, uh, what, what about Tim Allen? <laughs> he wasn't there when I did that. When you did Home Improvement? I remember he had a flip phone. I thought it was pretty... Oh, Look at him, yeah. he's got the flip oh, phone. Oh, shit. I remember the first time I ever saw someone take a picture on a camera phone. It was at a Bakersfield Blitz arena football game, and I thought wow. that guy must have been the richest guy in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I had that, yeah. That's what they got Michael Richards on. Well, I was, that was why that Michael Richards thing was so big, because that was like the first like gotcha viral video that somebody didn't know was going That's on. That's Bruce's favorite set. He's ever yeah, saying. It's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, he yeah. You can talk. Set. You can talk. The famous words. Uh, the, <laughs> I, I that was like one of the most famous things. I, yeah, I, I talk about that all the time because uh, at the comedy store a lot, Fraser Smith will be hosting the uh, the Monday night thing, and then so he's the one bringing me up, and I have to bring it up because at the end of that video, and I've d- had Fraser on a podcast before, and we talked about it. At the end of the video, Michael Richards he throws the mic on the ground, he comes off stage, and it's very grainy. <laughs> but then Fraser wa- is hosting, walks back on stage, and goes, 
Well, I don't know what to say, folks. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and then just has to continue the <laughs> show about that, from folks. there. And what he said is that I, I forget who he said, an Italian guy uh, from New Jersey, from New Jersey, is the next comedian. They just have to continue the show. And that the guy goes on stage and he goes up there and the crowd is in shambles. There, and then he goes, I don't know. He says, uh, I don't know what the big fuss is about. He's like, I'm from Jersey. We see that kind of shit every day. And then like that kills him and then he's like, okay, and, like the show was back on. Amazing. Yeah, if you know how to ride it, the, that you st- same state, never mind. <laughs> I mean, the, I'm editing myself because I know you have to go. This was fun. I hope you guys had fun. Well, oh, yeah, dude, I had a blast. What, do you have a question for me? I uh, do have another question 30 for 30 second you. answer. Uh, yeah, you, I mean, no, I'm not in a hurry, by the way. Give me one of yeah, your... I got a good another 15 minutes. Oh, you do? Yeah. All right. Well, tell me, because I, I, uh, I talked to my kids about your famous desserts. Uh, because you one time I came over here and you, we had vanilla bean ice cream and you poured cat or you poured uh, cat food. Uh, cat food. <laughs> <laughs> cat food. I'll tell you, I have never. It was tuna. Let's see what no. your memory is if it is, it, and I'll tell you exactly it was what it was. Cinnamon toast crunch, and it was delicious. That is a good one. Uh, and you would think that's a pretty easy. I'm good at mixing things. Like I'm not good at cooking good or at making doc- my own doctoring. desserts, but I like doctor. And I was going to write a book called a show called Doctor This. Um, and but, it's uh, just a picture of your ass. But <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> Doctor, this asshole. The cereals you should play like what we used to do back in the day was we'd get the six boxes so we could test different cereals. Yeah. But so so after a while, everybody should do this with whatever cereal they want. It doesn't matter. But I'm heavily suggesting that the cinnamon toast crunch is good. Great. But also frosted flakes are good. They don't. You some cereals don't mm. do as well. I think with the ice cream because it stops it completely. It's too much of the ice cream, and then you hit that crunch. It's like you want crunch, but not. That, that still gets yeah, in the yeah. way of the creaminess of the ice cream. So Rice Krispies are pretty good. Yeah, Like yeah, just yeah. a bland Rice Krispie. But just or, for texture. For texture. Yeah. Uh, but the, the Cinnamon Toast Crunch with the vanilla. And I always think the ice cream's better if you put it, especially with doing the ice, the, the mixing it in. If you have patience, wait. Or put it in the microwave. So it's yeah. still ice cream, yeah. but it's... Soft serve. It's a soft bit. serve. Yeah, it's yeah, soft yeah. serve. Exactly. Delicious. Uh, and the other thing is, this is like a good dessert. Like, you know... Ice cream cakes, I always feel like everybody always wants an ice cream cake. I should speak for myself. My ex loved ice cream cakes. So, But the ice cream cake is never really that good. It's not like when you go, you know, you get the moist uh, cake part. It's always like that pound cake. That's yeah, it's not, hard. Not even the best pound cake. So what I would do is go get these... Um, uh, uh, they're they're in every supermarket. They're pre-made, but they're moist as fuck. They're like cinnamon swirls. They have apple swirls. Oh yeah, you can really do it with any. It was cold. you know so when you're good. Yeah, okay, and then just get ice cream. It's Kellogg's. Like you better shut the fuck up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then go get ice cream like a quart of. Uh, you know, any ice cream at all, you know, like well, I usually go with vanilla, not get in the way of yeah. it. Yeah, and then I just put it all over. Amazing. No, I don't. I'm telling this wrong. So then I get this cinnamon swirl and I cut it in half long ways. I put it on and then I put ice cream in there and then put the top back on. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. A lot of ice cream, put the top back on, put it in the freezer. For some reason, those cakes, even two, three hours later, the cake part will still be sort of soft. Yes. Then when you cut it, you're like, this is a fucking great ice cream cake. Yeah, yeah. So it's... Because uh, the ice cream's not a brick of ice. It's not a... Yeah. And, and I also did it with the cheese. Uh, it's like a cheese crumble, cheesecake once. <sighs> And I just put it all over the top. That I put all over the top. I put it in the freezer, cut it. It was fucking stupid good. I bet. It was like it was the cheesecake was denser and then the ice cream. And it's also when you do something like that, you're the compression of it. You could go, well, you can put a scoop of ice cream next to a piece of anything. or, But it's when you do it together and it molds together and you eat it. That's what makes that that's so good yeah my wife used to make ice cream cakes for everybody's birthday all the all the kids birthday and that's what essentially what she would do she'd she'd melt it down a little bit she'd make a cake and then yeah. put, put a layer in the middle and then put it in the freezer so it doesn't all it doesn't drip melt but it, you know and the and the cake being hot too oh she did of, it with a hot cake yeah because yeah, she'd make the cake and she cut it and then she put it and oh, oh man it was that's gonna be the mother load it's, right it's there. amazing my mother used to make uh, mississippi mud pie um, oh come on don't be gross <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, at least she had I the know. fan on she had the spray yeah, yeah you talk about a callback yeah, talking shit why do you have to be dirty like that i can picture her now in the bathroom <laughs> just like tib robinson making mud pies all over <laughs> hey you little piece of shit i got your birthday cake coming out right now but i i think that that's because i feel the same way about uh i think that you're a very thorough person 
and in a way of that you want everything to be set up for success. Even example when you sent the directions today, it said my car is here. There are hedges there. You walk through the hedges, past the orange gate, and then you're going to be in my backyard. And it's very much because you're. It's kind of the same way. Whenever I get food delivered in my Postmates, there's a, probably a four. He sentence always does thing. this. He always brings. It's up good. It makes their Postmates. life easier. When it you does know. because you, I say I say go past this plant. First stairs on the left. Walk all the way down the thing. Leave it right there. And you always so, write, "Don't be an asshole." I say, "Don't, don't be an asshole," asshole and weird. don't if if I if and don't even don't stick around too long. Yeah, yeah don't uh, be well, an you asshole. take for granted, especially with food delivery. A lot of people would hear us say this and think they do it, but you're right. I try to with Uber. I have very uh, you know very specific things that I will tell them, and uh, I have a, a blue light out there, so I'll turn the blue light on and yeah. just think, "Oh, they're turning, they're driving, see, they're parking." You see the blue light, and that's where you see the blue light, and it's that, and I think that. I think you're very passionate about things that – then this isn't me saying it, but things that in the long run of life and death, political – will the nuclear bomb go off – do not matter. But they matter in a way of if it helps you enjoy the moment, moment to moment, yeah. it makes things more enjoyable and easier and better overall – in a way that I think is a very interesting, and I think that you have a way of like, that's very fascinating. Even Kevin saying, uh, you know, you do desserts, and then you go on this know, thing, and it's and it, I love it. I think everybody loves it, but it's this is a thing where pe it sticks in people's mind of next time they're going to do a thing, be like, oh fuck, Todd, I heard that thing Todd Glass yeah. said, and now yeah. if I do this, it's going to make me whatever. I think it's uh, I think it's a very interesting thing. You know, I appreciate the kind words. And I really do. And, I, and I, I guess like sometimes when I feel like I have to deflect it a little, not even here because, you know, necessarily just here, but like even here to like deflect the, the kind words. But like I think everybody's just drawn to different things that they care about. Yeah. So although it flabbergasts me sometimes lighting, my ex says I ruined him. Meaning well, when that, he goes to weddings thing. now, yeah. he, meaning he goes not because I don't agree with you. I agree with you. Most weddings, it's but before when, he, I didn't think about. He it. didn't think about it. He goes and now I see when people come over my house, they they can love it. They can know to love it. He's now living this life because he just got a place and he's making it nice. And he goes, people can love it and not even attempt to do it at their own place. And it's not a money thing. You go, but they wouldn't shut up about how funky it felt in here and how cool it felt in here. It was all lighting. Yeah. And then I go to their place and, I, and it's like, it's a weird thing. A it's, laboratory. A, it's a phenomena for me. It's a phenomena. Weddings, these people get paid to do it. But nevertheless, going back to deflecting. And I just think I always sort of guess I cared about it, whether it's a house or a comedy club, the ambiance. And it's so cheap. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's 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 and you it's, just it's you have to care. It's not about you have to have a, you just, just you have right. to care about your own moment to moment enjoyment and comfortability. And you seem very right. comfortable. You I mean, don't you have, have to have a lot of money. Comfortable you don't have moccasins. To, you thank this you. couch, this, yeah. your pants, everything. You, you don't have to have a lot of money. The the fun thing is, you even see people that have money. If you have money, you can do more with ambiance. Then you can really go. Uh, can, can I just share this because I know it has nothing to do with anything, but it'll just show. When I get obsessed with something that just because everybody does something doesn't mean it's right. We know that socially, of course. The, but it's also in weird things. And I'm going to point something out. If everybody notices once, it'll pay off. Most people that build fire pits. Like, I have a fire pit in my yard. Yeah, and it's offset. It, um, Correct? Is that, or is that that big thing with, on the chair? Uh, no, the no, chair? no. Okay. Fire pit is with the chairs around it for a fire. Oh, the thing in the middle. I was thinking yeah, yeah, of the, yeah. the chimney looking thing. So m mine isn't an expensive one. Believe me, mine is six little boulders that we made a circle out of, and I just put chairs around it. But even if you had money to do a real cool one, and then you see them put cement benches. You see it all the time. I'm talking yeah, about yeah. people My that house. spend $250,000 and come here, and I tell them, and they go still do it. And I see it, and I go, me and my friend have a joke, because they were one of my friends that did it right. They they were actually building their home, and I told them, and when I was going there the first time, I thought, said, don't fuck I'm yourself. ready to go and see they did it wrong, or they put, and not, of course, at that point, I don't say anything. I'm not a monster. You just go, but I went there. Now, they had a really nice one. It was built, 
but and they had these Adirondacks chairs. Now they had a little money to spend, so they had like real they there's were there were six around it. Yeah. But also the reason you do it that way, number one, for the comfort, and two, when you have people over, you're gonna to want to expand the circle around the fire. To have some chairs over behind your shed or chairs that you stack that are the good plastic ones. And then when you, but you have the six out there all the time or the four out there. But in the case, and that night it happened, and it made me so happy that there was like only like 12 people left. The six wasn't enough. Hey, everyone moved back a little bit. And we kept squeezing chairs in between. Yeah. There, but you see, c- cement, cement. And me and my friend Teresa have a running joke. I send her pictures of cement benches. People that have money. This is a guy advertising on TikTok and go, oh, can I imagine cozy and up there and just yeah. loving it? Yep. What do you wear? <clears throat> what? It's a park bench. That, that's like, uh, uh, you know. That would be an improvement. Yeah. Usually they're, they're straight back. Yeah, or no, I, my aunt has something. that exact thing. They built a very nice house, a beautiful fire pit with gas, blue stones, turns on. Benches. Flames come up, cement benches. Not only because the comfort of it, but you can't expand it. The expanding yeah. of it, I get most people would never think of, but I am right. It's a very well thought out thing as a designer of someone's backyard to go, you're going to want this expandable. So even if you had $1,000 a chair to spend, like you have that type of money, I would still do it with chairs that can be moved. Well, you more. could even do a cement bench, but put some fucking pillows on it. No, put it on. can't expand, and it's on one half, and it's not going to be... Is it going to be your... First of all, it's not a money thing. This, my way, is cheaper. Yeah. My way's cheaper. Oh, so you're saying like the ones that are built into the ground type of thing? Yeah. Be- oh, yeah. I don't mean yeah. park benches would be an improvement. Your back would probably fit yeah. into those. I'm talking about they build like a cement bench, like a cement back, a cement thing. Even if there's pillows on it, it's not going to be cozy. Yeah, I'll tell you, yeah, if yeah. I had cement benches, you know, first thing I would do is put those little grind stoppers on it so skateboarders don't drive by. <laughs> just <laughs> start, <laughs> start <laughs> grinding on my fucking stuff. Got to get those uh, Even at your house, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Go, you that, go, why do they have those? The, well, the people, yeah, they put sleep spi- out. spikes on it so people don't come sleep on it. I'd be, I'm very, yeah. Uh, <laughs> before Fire we, pits, that's Before all. we do go, I would, there's, I, I, I would like to hit you with a, a few questions if that's possible. Uh, if you, I thought about this earlier on the way because I was, I was alone uh, at, my, at my place. You're a classy guy. And I was thinking, whenever you're, it's just you, just you, no one else around, and let's say you have to, uh, you know, let's say you have to, uh, to pass gas or maybe belch, what, uh, what volume do you think that you're doing oh. that? Are you going full bore? Because I'll tell you right now, especially if nobody's around, I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to break the windows. Okay, I, I want to be incredibly I, honest with you because thank you. When, when I was ta- even when I talk about when I see someone eat, you know, and it's disgusting. When nobody is around, I am... Um, now, I won't go out of my way to, like, I don't think it's hilarious to, to pass gas, but, of course, when no one's around, I just do whatever I need to do. Yeah. Um, but uh, with food, my uh, the, it, it must be scary. There used to be a kid that worked on the podcast, and he ate like me, and I used to tell him, Chris, do you know why it bothers me the way you're eating? Because that's how I eat. And I go, yeah. I can't look at it anymore. In private. But you're... In you're private. Suppo- you are supp- if it's just you... And if it's no just else- you, I, of course, there's no rules, you know. Yeah. You, you'll be a little sloppier. That's what's maybe just cool about chilling out by yourself. But I do adapt those. Now, when I'm in front of people, I will change my... I'm not, like, uh, proper in an uncomfortable way yeah. that you wouldn't want to be you're, around you're, somebody. You're not putting a, a <laughs> handkerchief on while you're farting. Yes, yes, yes. And, <laughs> and, and I have definite... If I was, which I wouldn't want to do, but if I was going to, like... Uh, if, if I was helping somebody design their house now look I get it there's going to be people who hear this I'm not saying if you use coasters you can't have some crazy comfortable cool house it just happens to be that table is a certain way doesn't represent your stiffness of the house I get it you can use coasters and, and still have a very but I will still say if you're asking me and you haven't bought the tables yet and yeah, be a no fucking coaster house yeah. it's such a it's just a choice you make and unless you have a table that's and then put it in the other room and be a no coaster house. I just think it's a warmer I'm not saying I haven't been asked to use oh, a coaster and I don't mind at all. I really don't mind. But I guess I I guess I still prefer I think it's cool if you decide you're gonna be a no coaster house. Yeah. I, I'm sitting over here, Bruce, because that the camera just I mean, went we're gonna out. wrap up in a second. Yeah, but yeah. we still want to try. Yeah, wrap up over here. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll get all gonna have cuts. Todd, uh, <laughs> this is my other question. And um, was that short? I tried to give you a no, short. No, it's great. Not short enough. To Let's be say uh, I'm a little uh, so, look at us right here. Let's say if you had to pick for your death row meal, Ooh, what are you going that's with? That's good. Well, probably Thai food. Okay. Peanut with a peanut sauce. You, you know like the the sauce? thick noodle. 
Penis sauce? Penis sauce, exactly. <laughs> exactly. With a penis and sauce. No I, love, I love penis sauce. And don't isolate that. Um, <laughs> a video of me saying I love penis sauce and you play it on Eddie's podcast. Hey, but it'll get me a following. <laughs> um, hey, why not? Uh, uh, but uh, probably Thai... You know, like the 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 drunken pasta. It's that fat noodle, fat thin noodle. Yeah. So probably that. I love uh, that shit. So fair. Much. Uh, any anybody uh, anything you want to plug? Anybody else's stuff you want to plug? No, but I will. For what it's worth, Instagram, TikTok. Yes. Uh, yeah, Todd uh, shit is hilarious. It's one of my favorite things I've been watching lately. It's, and it's it really fun makes to me, do. Really makes me laugh. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. And they're fun to do. And um, ten year old. Oh, uh, is the strike? Are we? I try to be respectful of it, even though I'm not. M- doing much as far we'll, as marching but we'll uh, do, are we allowed to promote Tom. stuff uh well the actor strike's still going on so no mm. i don't think so well i don't have to I think say I'm to allowed, watch it i'm but, allowed to yeah watch Maybe. 10 year old time I'm it's fucking hilarious it's got some of my favorite comics on it that uh seem to all culminate in the same place and malkovich which is insane hell yeah uh, jennifer coolidge yeah uh you know a, a lot of really uh a lot of really great people i know their faces but i don't even know their names but i'll be like oh that that's from that show, or you know, or uh, Martin you Luther King. Voice. Yeah, Martin Luther King is on there. It's great. What's uh, the guy's name who does the ice cream truck? Oh, David Duchovny. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, Duchovny's great. Yeah. It's well, awesome. You know what's uh, the very last thing that made me laugh while I was watching? It was a clip of a podcast I was on where we found this out. They made that movie about Kurt Warner, the football player, and the actor that they had who played uh, a running back in the show was a guy named O.J. Keith Simpson who's a new actor now that goes by O.J. Keith Simpson that I thought was very funny because I think that he <laughs> probably could have just done Keith Simpson and yeah. been, been, been O.J. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's a choice to keep the O.J. O.J. Uh, was my father's name. I'm not changing yeah. it. Hell yeah. Uh, I appreciate it very much, Todd. Thank, thank you, you for, so much, Thank buddy. you for letting us come thank over. Thank you. Maybe we should have done the whole podcast like this. I know. Three no, guys no. on the couch. Yeah, it's no, very this intimate. Is, this is good. very funny. Your neck would have hurt. Uh, uh, all right, yeah. folks. Well, hey, thanks so much for joining us on the pod. Go subscribe, leave us a review, all that stuff. Go check out Todd on all the social medias. Watch 10-year-old Tom. Uh, you know, kiss your mother on the mouse. Tell her you love her. Goodbye, people. We love you just the way you are. That's the way you do it. Fucking bullshit. I can't. I'm fucking sweating over here. <laughs> Tired of helping you produce your show. You know, right now people are listening. Like it's in black. The name of your show is up. The credits, if you you, may, you know whatever, scroll shit to just make it look cool. They still hear us. Yeah, and then it fades to black on the fades, end. I fades like to that. Fades to black again, and then you think it's over.